when you go into uh, like uh, for, yeah, 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 extra innings, you get a guy, guy on second. On second. Uh, you Not know, I'm fan. okay. I'm okay with it just be, for time purposes. Uh, limiting the amount of of uh, mound visits, I'm okay with just because of the speed of the game. But there are just certain things that I don't agree with, and moving the mound back a foot just bugs me to death i just i don't, I don't like it leave it alone leave it alone yeah i don't know if i'm a fan of any of these rule changes the only one i would be in favor of at this point and i can't believe i'm saying it i've done a complete 180 on it is allowing the dh in the national league i would be okay with that at this point we do and it's not because of what happened last night i've had this take for a while now but last night max freed uh, injures his hamstring running the bases for the Braves, and now he's out. So, uh, just uh, again, it's like at at every level, the you have a DH. Why not in the National League and Major League Baseball? So, that one I would be okay with. All these other ones, I don't know. Just play the game. Like the three batter minimum for pitchers. I get what they're trying to do, but allow a manager to to manage his team i think yeah. i don't know so yeah anyway. i got you well another piece of news that just popped up just a moment ago uh sophomore connor norby is one of 45 players that have been named to the mid-season golden spikes award watch list so we got another watch list to watch another uh, watch list to, to watch. watch yes right. and uh, he's moving closer to naming uh the top okay hang on i gotta read is one of 45 players Moving closer to name the top amateur baseball player, high school or college in the co- in the country, according to USA uh, Baseball, and Norby becomes the fifth pirate and the first positional player in program history be- to be named to the midseason list. So okay. how about that? Is Malcolm Gray working in our lobby? <laughs> Apparently, because that popped up yes, just a moment is. ago. So <laughs> Are we good, Glenn? Is Glenn Griffin working in Studio B? Everybody yeah. okay? And, We're uh, putting in the work today, people. Yeah, so uh, it looks like they will um, announce the finalists on June 24th, and that's when the voting will begin. And then <clears throat> uh, in sometime in July, they'll announce the winner. All right. So, Congratulations. He is killing it. We'll talk later to Jeff Charles, uh, Shirley, who has the Pirate Radio podcast out right now with Pat Watkins. And Mm -hmm. some of the numbers Pat Watkins had, uh, you know, Connor Norby's trying to duplicate those. In fact, we'll talk to Jeff about that later on in the show. But uh, you can hear that podcast if you have not downloaded it yet. Coming up at 6 o'clock tonight right here on Pirate Radio. Yep. And then uh, that will be followed by some uh, Orioles baseball. Those As, win last night? Yeah, uh, yeah. they split a day-night doubleheader. They lost the first one, but won last night uh, on a walk-off single, 7-6. Uh, to six. So uh, they are heading into, let's see, today is Wednesday, right? So they are playing... The Mariners. Yeah, they're playing the Mariners. That's the final game of their series. They'll take a day off on Thursday, and then they'll be on the road again. They're going to be in Texas to take on the Rangers beginning friday night all right good deal we got some o's baseball coming your way unfortunately no more conley football into the fall they did not make the playoffs uh so we will have o's baseball for you on the weekend right here on pirate radio along with uh the golf shop radio show saturday mornings with greeny what's up chandler uh a quick turnaround for high school football because on my broadcast last friday night for whiteville um i mentioned to see you next season and my uncle, who is my color analyst, said, yeah, see you in four months. That's right. So, uh, it's a quick turnaround for those athletes. Uh, so, um, yeah. I don't think they'll get much of a summer off this year. No, and, and as Nate Connor and uh, we talked to Will Bland yesterday said, they, for the younger guys, this has been pretty awesome because they've had a spring football yeah. experience. And uh, they should be ready to go and in shape. Uh, and hopefully healthy when the fall rolls around. All right. Uh, anything else, Shirley? Anything else, Chandler? Nope. Uh, uh, all my y'all. teams stink. Braves stink. Hornets stink. Hurricanes stink. Oh. Hornets are a little banged up right now. Hopefully they can have oh Terry back tonight against the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. They got to win tonight. They have to win. They, they needed to win on Sunday against, uh, oh, man, I can't even remember who we played. They were banged the up. Hawks. The Hawks. The banged up Hawks. So hopefully we can get a win tonight. Um, I did see today. I don't know if y'all mentioned it. James Connor is heading to Phoenix, uh, the longtime Steeler. He's finally leaving Pittsburgh. He uh, played college football at uh, the University of Pittsburgh, 
and then play for the Steelers, and now he's heading off to Phoenix to be a Cardinal. The Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I know, but yeah, Arizona. <laughs> but you're they're not, in Phoenix, right? You're not old enough to remember the Phoenix Cardinals, are you? Because <laughs> yeah. they were the Phoenix Cardinals. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, back yeah, like when I. I'm just thinking of Phoenix for some reason. <laughs> there he's going to Phoenix. I'm going to Phoenix uh, to play for. Where's Kenyon Drake? Kenyon Drake. Uh, Here's a trivia question: Who does Kenyon Drake play for? Is he not with the Cardinals anymore? Um, he could be, but they already have. Oh, he is a Raider. He's an Oakland Raider. Nope, no, he's no, he's a Las, Las Vegas, Vegas Raider. <laughs> Jeez, the Charlotte Panthers. You got to get back into the NFL groove. So Drake is a Raider because they also have the Edmonds guy out in Arizona, mm-hmm. aka Phoenix. Uh, so James Conner joining him there. Chad, the Orioles fan, says nothing like a walk-off single in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, that's what happened last night for the Orioles uh, in the game two of the doubleheader. All right, let's uh, take a break. We'll come back. Malcolm Gray will join us inside the Pirate Radio studios. We will talk all things ECU football and, or excuse me, ECU baseball. Sorry, Malcolm, I want to throw you a curveball there. ECU baseball and look around Major League Baseball as well. We're back with more on Pirate Radio Live here on a Wednesday. And the video is up and running. Great job, Big Dog and Chandler. So we got the video out if you want to watch it on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Check out Pirate Radio TV on YouTube. Back with you with more on Pirate Radio Live after this. Weekends are made for A.J. McMurphy's. Start your Sunday fun day at A.J.'s. AJ's is now serving brunch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and a build-your-own Bloody Mary bar. Enjoy your weekend with live music on Friday night and Saturday night with no cover charge. And you can catch all of the MLB and ECU baseball action on AJ's TVs. See you this weekend at AJ McMurphy's, Turnberry Square at Bell's Fork, and on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Hey, Eastern North Carolina, this is Miles Menjis. And this is Landon Menjis with Menjis Bottling Group. We are proud to announce that Pepsi is once again the official soft drink of the ECU Pirates. That's right, Miles. Our family's purple and gold roots run deep. From founding members of the Pirate Club, alumni, and even a team physician, our support over the last 60 years has never wavered. We are Pirates. We're excited to be back at ECU and are honored to serve our great customers throughout Eastern North Carolina. Not only is this the birthplace of Pepsi-Cola, this is our home. Cheers, Pirate Nation. I like the sound of that. Support local, drink local, stay safe, and drink Pepsi. This is Dr. Anthony Scali from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center of Greenville. We offer a variety of services including arthroscopic surgery, sports medicine, carpal tunnel surgery, general orthopedics, fracture care, total joint replacement, physical therapy, and on-site MRIs. For experienced and professional medical care, visit our office on WH Smith Boulevard in Greenville and online at orthoeast.com. Orthopedics East, providing services to ECU and Pitt County Athletics for over 35 years. Go Pirates! At U.S. Cellular, we see our customers as more than just customers. They're neighbors. When you switch to U.S. Cellular, you can get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free with no hidden requirements. As a neighbor, you deserve it. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Sam Jones, and we're opening here to serve you with some of the best whole hog barbecue, chicken, turkey, ribs, and homemade sides every day for lunch and dinner. There are three easy ways to enjoy Sam Jones barbecue. Swing by our drive through window or try one of our two curbside takeout options by calling in your order at 689-6997 or ordering online at samjonesbbq.com. We love Eastern North Carolina, and we invite you to come by and enjoy some great-tasting Sam Jones barbecue today. 
Farmfield Flower Basket and Gifts is your hometown shop for gifts and fresh flowers. You can find unique items like Brewmate and apparel by Southern Couture, Simply Southern, and Bella Cotton. The Farmville Flower Basket also has items coming in daily for the spring and summer. Whether it's a gift or a flower arrangement for that special someone, you can find it at Farmville Flower Basket and Gifts. Give them a call today at 753-4217 or stop by their shop on Main Street in Farmville. Here today with Gamecock, also known as Bruce Batten to his friends and family, YF3. For me, it's really two things, accountability and fellowship. And looking at turning 50 years old and where I was headed physically, it wasn't the path that I wanted to be on. I was lucky enough to run into some guys that kind of headlocked me and brought me out here. And uh, once out here, uh, I kind of fell in love with the atmosphere. The fellowship's unbelievable. I've got a group of guys behind me. No matter what I'm going through in my life, I can depend on. And uh, that's what it's about. One letter, one number, F3. Learn more today at F3. 3enc.com. This is Brian Bailey, host of the Brian Bailey Show, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. to Hour 1 of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. If you've got damage from wood rot, consider it fixed. How about damage from smoke or fire? Fixed. Damage caused by water? Fixed. If you've got damage, use a contractor that works for you and not your insurance company. Visit FixedNC.com today or call 999-0001. That's three nines, three zeros, and a one. Fixed NC, restore, renew, maintain. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Cliff Brock. All righty, here on a Wednesday, beautiful day in eastern North Carolina. Charlie Rhodes, Chandler Honeycutt, Cliff Brock here, and Malcolm Gray from ECU Media Relations joining us inside the Pirate Radio studios. Try to do this once a month with Malcolm now that there's no midweek games. You got a little extra time, Malcolm, to come hang out and talk some baseball. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime I can come in and talk baseball, I'll do it. Especially when the Red Sox are playing well. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> the, the, it was the reverse jinxing we were talking about the last time we were up here. That is true. All right, so uh, first things first, Malcolm. ECU and Houston, game on for the weekend? Game is on. Excellent. All Team right. leave tomorrow uh, out of Greenville at 7.30 a.m. All right, and uh, I, you know how, and I don't know how much you know about what was going on at Houston, but how close do you think it was to not happening and and how it was was cliff goblin and company already working the phones for a replacement well i found out yesterday morning from a friend of mine uh, who works at tulane saying that uh there could be some issues with the houston series and i'm like dude what are you talking about and he's like i'm not sure he goes that's just what the rumor's going on i was like all right no big deal well then uh you know kendall rogers tweeted something out about it he lives in houston texas he's also a big you know uh east carolina fan he loves coach goblin in the way the Pirates play baseball. And uh, so he tweeted it out. Corey sent me a text and he's like, hey, you know anything about this? I said, no. Started walking around asking people. And long story short, apparently uh, the strength coach or one of the strength coaches for uh, Houston baseball uh, worked the team out and then tested positive for COVID. Uh, So what they were doing was contact tracing. Gotcha. And um, and then I got a call from uh, a friend of mine because then the rumor started coming out, you know, Creighton and UConn series was banged. Is ECU going to go – is ECU going to host Creighton, go there? Is that a possibility? And uh, a buddy of mine uh, at Creighton called me and said, hey, uh, you know, do you have a way of getting up with Coach Goblin? And I told him, well, I'm looking out the window right now. He's on the field. And he's like, okay. He goes, uh, can you let him know that uh, we have called and left him a message? I was like, sure, hmm. no problem. Well, then next thing you know, uh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, and then I texted Cliff last night around seven o'clock, just saying, "Hey, uh, um, curious, are we still in a holding pattern? What's going on?" He's like, "We're just waiting on the results from uh, from Houston," and then obviously he came out earlier this morning um, that you know everything was good to go. So now. You know, everything's ready to roll. They're going to go out there, like I said, leave tomorrow morning at 7.30. Bottom line, that, that's the most important thing ECU Houston are playing. But I think that's important to note moving ahead that if there are issues and the issues are not regarding ECU, they're regarding the opponent that ECU is playing, that 
Cliff Gowan and, and the team would still be looking to add games for the weekend and, and not have a weekend off because they want to, you know, keep the guys playing. But also the RPI, like that, that's a big factor too, Malcolm. If you could like upgrade a team, yeah. you would think that he's, you would want to do that. It, you're ab- yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody in the league would want to do that. Right. And, you know, well, one of the things is, is obviously you want to play your conference games because that, that means something, um, especially if you're the conference champion regular season. And you know, I think there's a rule uh, that was passed recently in the in the league that you have to make sure you play at least 75 percent of your games, or you will not be eligible in in the conference. You will not be eligible to uh, win. I think the regular season title. You'll automatically go back to when they could do the seating order. You would go down to the bottom. But you would be able to play in the you, tournament. Yeah, you'll be able to play in the tournament, yes. But you, you know that, that automatically, you know, the conference then wouldn't. I don't think would recognize you as a regular season champion. Okay. Now the worst part about that is, is if you're doing everything the right way and you just have yeah. some schools, then you're kind of hamstrung. So I'm not 100 percent sure what how that rule is is going to be enforced and all like that because, like I said, I just was made aware of it yesterday. All right, Malcolm Grace, some good info joining us here today on pirate radio live malcolm the decision to move up the date as far as um regional teams super regional teams and when those sites are going to be announced so we are past the deadline to put in a bid mm-hmm. correct and ecu has put in a bid as far I, as you I, was, know? I was told we did yes okay that, that now, is... i don't know obviously this year it's not financially based like it's been in the past um i think it goes more of uh, what the NCAA will get on the back end for like gate revenue and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I don't know the ins and outs of that, but I have was told uh, by Ryan Robinson that we did put a bid in. So Pirate fans know that we we're doing everything we can to get a regional, super regional in Greenville. Uh, and I, I said this when we, when that first came out, it was like, all right, how is this going to screw over ECU? But the more you, <laughs> the more I looked at it, and I think the more everybody looked at it, they were like, okay, this could be a positive. And now I've come to think that. You know, the earlier they can make their decision, the better for ECU. I mean, look at where they are right now. Top 10 RPI, top 10 in the polls, undefeated in conference play. If they could go and make that decision tonight, then ECU might be a, a, top, a national seed, a top eight seed. Uh, but we'll see where they are in early to mid-May when those decisions are made. But bottom line, Malcolm, I, I think the Pirates are in pretty good shape. How about you? To, yeah. to be at least a, a top 16. Yeah, if they keep doing you know, what yeah. they're doing right now, and I'm not saying that the Pirates are going to go out and they're going to sweep every series because that's very difficult to do, uh, especially playing four games. But if they win every series, then yes. I mean, that way they hold the tiebreaker on everybody. And, you know, you win the conference regular season championship, you'll become the one seed in your, in your tournament. And then you just got to you know, hold off everybody for uh, four or five days down in Clearwater, Florida. You're not surprised the Pirates are playing good baseball right now, are you? I mean, are you surprised at all at 8-0? Yeah, I, well, going in, you know, I think me and Corey Glore talked about this. We we probably put the over-under at maybe four times this year, you know, collectively with all the teams, that there will be a 4-0. Right. You know, a 4-0 series. And it's already happened three times <laughs> in two weeks, and ECU's done it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, and it's it's definitely coach speak, and and Coach Guy and the team and the assistant coaches all believe it, and they and they say it all the time. You just got to win the first one. Then when you win the first one, win the second one, then the third and the fourth. You can't you can't you know go four and zero on the weekend if you lose the first one. You know, so it's and they're they're eight and zero, so they're dominating. But we're you're at every game, Malcolm. You see how close these games are, yeah. and how. A pitch or two and a bat or two goes a different way. ECU is six and two right now instead of eight and zero, but they've been able to to make the key plays when they need them. The, the Colmore Sailor have been able to get out of jams when they've needed to, and mm-hmm. and just man the execution. I was watching my Braves the other night, two on, nobody out, bottom of the ninth. They couldn't advance the runners, and they go down and then don't score. The ECU uh, the other day. Two on, nobody out late in the game. I think it's the bottom of the eighth. And Seth Cadell was up to bat. Your power guy is up to bat, lays down the bunt, gets him to second and third, and Moylan hits a ball that if the infield is playing at normal depth, it's, it's might not score a, double, a run. Probably a double play. At worst, it's a fielder's choice. Yeah, the guy at third holds. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, But Moylan's able to bounce it over the first baseman's head, two-run score. Uh, 
and you say the little things, that's a big thing. I mean, to, to get that bunt down by Cadell and just the execution there really shows you that they're they're hitting on all cylinders right now. They, they are, and Cliff said it after the uh, game. You know, he went up to uh, Cadell and asked if Cadell could lay down the bunt, and Cadell said, I can lay it down. I just don't know where it's going. <laughs> and Cliff said, well, just lay it down. That's all we need to do. We just yep. got to move the runners over. He hit it right back to the pitcher. Pitcher threw it to first, made the out. But the runners went from first to second, second to third. And like you said, then Moylan was able to lay over on one and get a good spin and hop over to first baseman, two-run score, and then that's the game. But literally, it's that's that was in, the I think, the seventh or eighth inning, like you said, and we ended up winning that game 7-1. Yeah, it, 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 it looked like a blowout, but it was just that one inning. But if he doesn't get that bunt down – you're probably trying to win it in the bottom of the ninth now. Yeah, and we were talking about the uh, Memphis had their Kenny Powers uh, looking lefty pitcher. In. Didn't yeah. have the gas that Powers had, but man, he was locating. He was uh, seventy seven was looking pretty good. He was pitching well, and uh, they were able to get to the bullpen and, and win that game. Uh, yesterday, Igo and I were talking about the return of Lane Hoover, Malcolm, and from the the outside looking in. We wondered, like, mentally, is it going to be tougher to get over the injury maybe mentally than physically at this point? But it looked like he didn't really miss a beat as far as playing in the field and being up to bat. He looked pretty comfortable, I thought. Yeah, I thought he did, too. Uh, You know, one thing is obviously very noticeable in him is he lost about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, With the procedure that he had, they had to wire his jaw shut. shut. So he was drinking and eating food out of a straw. That's great, yeah. And uh, so he he looked, when I saw him, about three weeks after – uh, the surgery, he looked like Lane Hoover coming in as a freshman. <laughs> right. Like he hadn't worked out or anything. He so went he, back in time. Yeah, so he's been building his strength back up and then he finally got into the dugout and Zach Womack, the athletic trainer, basically told him he's like, all right, every two innings you're going to eat a peanut butter sandwich, you're, uh, you know, you're going to eat protein drinks, you know, all this just trying to put weight and we're going to weigh you at the end of the game and see if you've gained any weight. That's because, hilarious. Because they're trying to put weight on him. That reminds me of Bryce Williams. He'll be on at 5 o'clock. He told me uh, because Bryce has that big frame, but was kind of wiry, just couldn't build muscle and, and build mass. And he said he would set an alarm to wake up at like one a.m. and he would he wouldn't he wouldn't go with a sandwich. He'd have a jar of peanut butter beside his bed and just eat straight peanut butter and then go back to sleep. I do that, I do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we do, yeah, it's a little different when we do that uh, than when Bryce and Lane are doing it. But uh, yeah, trying to put that weight back on. But man, it, it just the way they were able to play without a Makarovich, Riley Johnson coming on Malcolm uh, shows the depth of this team because going into the year Hoover was like all right who who are the guys you really need to to be in this lineup I mean he's one of those guys he's been in the two hole which uh, we'll see you know if he remains there they go a different direction but he is a key member to what this team does not only at at the plate but also defensively yeah you're absolutely right I mean coming in like you said you were looking at you know four four outfielders Hoover Bryson uh, Makarevich out there a little bit and Francisco and then now with Hoover coming back, um, you got Riley Johnson. The way he's been playing, you've got five different players that can play in the outfield positions and play them well. Now you got two guys that can play first base, two guys can play third base. We've seen when Ryder comes in, or you know uh, Cliff takes Norby out for give him some rest, or or Ryder out. You can move Agnos over to short. You can move him at second base. You got Starling. You got a lot of moving pieces, which is going to be huge down the stretch because that way you can give these guys a chance to have a day or two off and still be fine. And you would think that those the, the extra outfielders would be used as a DH or maybe Moylan and put Francisco at first, but the emergence of Ben Newton, yeah, as we've seen him at DH, we knew that he would play at probably at least a game during the four-game weekends, right, to, yeah, to spell Cadell. Yeah. But now you've got a situation where you have both of those guys in the lineup. And, you know, maybe you, Malcolm, being an insider in the program, knew I had no idea Ben Newton would be such a factor for this team in 2021. I, I thought defensively, offensively, one thing I did know he could do is he could draw walks and he could get hit like nobody. <laughs> and, and, and I mean that he led the team, if I'm not mistaken, last year in hit by pitches. I think he got hit three times in one of the Charlotte games last year. So he's Charlie gonna, Jorgen of he, this year's yeah, team. Yeah, he, he's he'll sit in the dugout and he's a left-handed hitter. So I mean, excuse me, he'll sit in the batter's box. He's a left-handed hitter. And again, if you're trying to go, uh, it's day to give um, 
Cadell, uh, you know, some break, a break, and they're throwing a right hander. Well, now you got Newton that can be in there, but your left hander, you're fine. You can put, uh, you know, uh, Moylan in there as well. So now you got two additional left handed hitters, and you can start playing matchups, and you can also play matchups late in the game, too, which is what we know Cliff likes to do. Somebody pointed out uh, in the press box the other day that Memphis had all righties in their lineup. And just, I, I mean, that might be a small thing, but thinking about it with ECU, all the. I guess uh, different different spots they can put up there with a lefty, with a righty, as you said, play the matchups. That's another thing that ECU might have over, over opposing teams. Yeah, you're right. And you have two guys in uh, Makarevich and Worrell who are switch hitters, so you don't have to take their bats out of the lineup. You just flip them over to the other side. Yeah. How, and Malcolm, you do you put in, um, I guess, suggestions or do you do – you, Say who's the player of the week for ECU? Do you like I'm the right in? Mm-hmm. How nice was it to to nominate uh, Bryson Worrell after a a slow start, but what he was able to do last I, week? I, it was awesome, and you know, when I, once I found out that, and I wasn't sure if he was going to win because if you looked on the team, Bryson had more home runs than is between him and Francisco. Bryson had more home runs, more RBIs, more walks, more runs scored. He just had less hits because he had less at bats, and so I'm looking at the numbers. I said, "Well, you know what?" And I sent it to the conference office, and uh, and you know, I get an email back saying uh, that he was already a guy that they were looking at anyway. And then boom, I get an email saying that he won, and Cam was uh, was going to be uh, on honor roll. We had a feeling the kid from Wichita State who had 11 strikeouts and in seven innings against Houston was going to get it. And uh, so I texted Cliff immediately. I said, "Hey, just a heads up. This is this is going at around two thirty. And Cliff was like, "That's awesome." Yeah. I mean, and he so did, you nominate a player a week, a pitcher and a hitter a well, week. I, my philosophy is, if if we win the series, yes, I'll do it. Unless it's a record that you know that that's been broken mm-hmm. or something like that. If you go, you know, say two and two on a week. Or if you have a winning week, but if uh, you know, like last year, anytime if we would have gone one and three, then no, I wouldn't have nominated anybody. Gotcha. If it's two or two, I think about it. But if you have a winning w- week, I do. Yeah, ten four. All right, uh, congratulations to Bryson. We've seen Gavin Williams' name on that list quite a few times this year we've, already. We've had, as well, we've had this is uh, I think we've played seven weeks of baseball, and we've had someone either win the player or pitcher of the week or be an honor roll member for seven straight weeks. That's awesome. Only team that's done that. That just shows you what a complete team this uh, we have right now. Pirates are rolling right now. Malcolm Gray joining us. We will take a timeout, come back, and talk some Major League Baseball with Malcolm Gray. Look at what's caught his eye the first couple of weeks of the Major League Baseball season. We'll update on uh, what's going on in Major League Baseball right now on this Wednesday. Back with more on Pirate Radio Live when we uh, rejoin you after this. National Signing Day has come and gone, but that doesn't mean the recruiting news cycle is stopping. In fact, the Pirates still have their sights set on top targets in the transfer portal and have already turned their attention to the 2022 class. HoistTheColors.net has the latest on EC recruiting from a football perspective, and we also cover basketball and baseball commitments like no others. Sign up now and get your first month for a single dollar to get the latest scoop on your favorite Pirate teams, along with in-depth baseball and spring football coverage in the months ahead. HoistTheColors.net the area's number one pool builder for over 40 years is Greenville Pool and Supply. From fiberglass to vinyl to custom concrete, they do it all. And if you already have a pool, make sure your water is clean and safe this swim season with the help of the pros at Greenville Pool. If you bring a water sample to them, they'll test it for you in the store for free. And going on now is the annual water care sale with 20% off all water care products in the entire store. The 20% off sale is going on now until Saturday, April 17th. But only at Greenville pool and supply. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get a 2021 Cadillac and save over $4,000 off and 0.9% for 72 months. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. 
ENS Hemp Company in Winterville is your premier CBD store. At ENS Hemp Company, they have helped hundreds of people just like you get relief from joint pain, anxiety, insomnia, and more by providing you the highest quality of CBD products available. ENS Hemp Company has a great selection of only the safest, purest, and most beneficial hemp infused products available from honey, tea, coffee, candles, and more. ENS Hemp Company, Fire Tower Road in Winterville, and online at eshempcompany.com. The best place for delicious food and great prices is Familia. Familia has $6 lunch specials, a $10 pizza of the week, and every Thursday has $2 drafts all day. Sunday brunch is the best for food and family. Come and enjoy favorites like shrimp and grits, made-to-order omelets, French toast, and drink specials like $3 mimosas, beer mimosas, or $5 Bloody Marys. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. How great is it that baseball is starting on time this year? My fearless predictions are coming up next. The Pirate Radio Podcast. Now, what was you? You have a uh, incredible ability to be able to spit off our IP address, but uh, not uh, have your zipper up on your pants. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 an, it's an amazing talent. Listen to every Pirate Radio podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribing in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. The Pirate Radio podcast is powered by White Claw Hard Seltzer, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. How good is it to know that baseball is starting on time this year? So here goes our fearless predictions and also our fingers crossed for a 162-game season. Let's start with the American League East. The slight edge goes to the Rays over the Yankees. How amazing is it that the Tampa Bay Rays win with the lowest payroll in the league? American League Central, the White Sox get the nod despite losing young slugger Eloy Jimenez to a season-ending injury. The American League West, here's my upset pick, the Angels. They'll hit with Mike Trout and Anthony. Anthony Rendon, will the pitching be good enough? In the National League, first the East, a lot of Braves fans out there, and yes, they are the best team, and now go out and prove it. The National League Central is wide open and not very good. The Cardinals are probably the best of a mediocre lot. Out West, stick with the defending champs. The Dodgers have it all. Pitching, hitting, speed, and defense. In fact, I'm picking the Dodgers to repeat as World Series champs. Come on back again next time, and we'll visit inside the booth. Pirate Radio! Pirate Radio. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. For the latest breaking news, interesting stories, and awesome contests that can make you a winner, be sure to follow Pirate Radio on our social media on Facebook and Instagram at PR927FM. You can follow us on Twitter at free pr 927 fm Join the close to 50,000 followers today at PR927FM. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Rock. Talked a lot of Pirate Baseball a moment ago with Malcolm Gray. We'll talk more Pirate Baseball coming up in the 4 o'clock hour with Corey Glore, the play-by-play voice for ECU Baseball. We'll ask him about getting his windshield shattered by baseball out at Clark LeClaire Stadium. Yeah, that he, happened. He was in the danger zone. <laughs> he was definitely in the danger zone. <laughs> in the splash zone. zone. Uh, we'll talk about that. Well, uh, let's talk a little ma- Major League Baseball, Malcolm. And uh, the hottest team in Major League Baseball, seven straight wins. For the Boston Red Sox, so they got swept by the O's, right? Got swept by the O's, yeah. And then they swept the uh, Rays, Race. and then they swept the O's, and now they're playing in Minnesota and took uh, game one yesterday. Seven wins in a row. They're seven and three right now. They're up three to two. The Twins just got a couple back, uh, but they are up three to two. This is game one of a doubleheader. And uh, Malcolm, not that you'd forget, uh, but these doubleheaders are seven innings. You, I have yeah. to keep reminding myself that. And, it's different. Uh, it's not what we're used to, uh, you know, watching it prior to last year. So uh, right now, Red Sox lead it in the fourth inning. Um, Yankees at the bottom of the AL East, but they are five and six. And you'll probably be fine. O's are five and six. In fact, everybody's five and six in the AL East, other than the Red Sox right now. We'll just go division by division, Malcolm, like we like to do. Um, I guess the the biggest shocker is your Red Sox, right? That they've uh, been able to win all these games in a row. Yeah, no, no, I'm definitely shocked. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't expect this at all, and. 
And it might just be because it's early and, you know, a lot of games have been canceled or postponed because of COVID or things like that. But, um, you know, Devers is playing well. Bogarts is playing well. Christian Vasquez is playing really well. So is J.D. Martinez, who was on fire. I think he was just named uh, hitter of the week in the MLB uh, today. So, uh and we're getting some pitching. I mean, Matt Barnes, I think, got his first save last night. So that's uh, that's encouraging to see. It looks like across the board in the AL, just a ton of parity. Everybody, Red Sox are four games over five hundred. That is by far the most in the American League. If you look at the Central, uh, top place Indians are six and four. Last place White Sox are five and six. So we have not had enough games yet to really separate anybody especially in the American League, Malcolm. But what stands out to you, if anything, about the Central so far this year? Indians right now on top of the division. To me, and again, it's so early. You're 10 to 12 games in. But the Chicago White Sox, I mean, Kopech, I think, threw yesterday or the day before. He looked good. Um, And then, you know, Eloy Jimenez goes down. And all of a sudden, now you've got this guy who's leading Major League Baseball (laughs) and and I think hits and batting average. Uh, I can't even pronounce his name, but he's – Dude's on fire. He started the season. He had eight hits in his first eight at bats. And uh, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes, Yerman Mercedes is hitting like four eighty five right now. And we'll talk to Jeff Charles later in the show. His favorite player is the guy for the Tigers, Malcolm. The uh, the the new kid. I'll, I'll get his name here in a moment. Who's just tearing up the the baseball right now. Uh, so that is it's looked at as one of the weakest divisions. Yes. But, uh, uh, you know, somebody's got to come out of it. We'll see who does. Looking out west, a good start for the Angels, Malcolm, for the first time in a while. The Angels can say they lead the AL West. And they've they've definitely added some pieces around Mike Trout. They had the Otani injury scare earlier this year. But looks like uh, everything's okay as far as that goes. Are the Angels going to be a factor this year? Or is it, you know, is this just an early hot start for them? I hope they're a factor because if they are, you know, Mike Trout's still Mike Trout, you know, uh, fantasy baseball wise, but I'd like to see you know Mike Trout get in the playoffs. I'd like to see um, you know uh, Otani do you know do what he's done early on this season. I know he's started twelve games. He's four home runs. I think he's hitting like three sixty. Uh, he's only pitched one game, but uh, you know, and I like to see Albert Pujols. He's on. A, on I mean, let's be honest, he's not going to be playing much longer. I like to see him make the playoffs again. So uh, yeah, I. You know, I hope it's long term, but you know, realistically, it could just be short term. Akil Badu, the player that uh, uh, Jeff Charles' favorite player, uh, he is absolutely killing it. That, did Did you have him in your fantasy? No, no I do not. <laughs> he is uh, he's quite a story for the Tigers right now, and what he's been able to do. Looking at the National League, uh, Chandler's National stink. Uh, glad to see that. But Malcolm, my Braves stink, and uh, they've got some injury issues now with Max Freed. Um, being hurt, Christian Pache hurt as well. They're still waiting to get Mike Soroka back. Uh, right now, it's basically been Ronald Acuna tearing the league up and, and trying to find a little help. But uh, the Braves struggling a little bit right now against the Marlins. They've lost two in a row to the Marlins. Lost on a terrible call the other night. Alec oh, Bohm didn't touch the plate. How, and as Kyle Gaskins uh, reminded me earlier today, he still hasn't touched the plate. <laughs> he he how never bad, will. How bad was that call? Yeah. I, 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 I don't want you to relive it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it's just a, a shame to have a, a replay system and it not work and just be completely wrong. I don't know. It's frustrating. Well, you know it's bad when you have people like a Mike Trout yeah. come out yeah. and, say, and say how bad that call was. That's not a good look for Major that, League Baseball. That is not a good look at all. No, I agree with you. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, they're having some bad luck right now. Um, I, did I hear that Freddie Freeman, something's going on with him too? Or is he okay? Uh, I don't know any. Okay, I thought someone. Uh, I thought Kyle might have said something earlier today about that, but you know, you got the team that's leading the division is four and three, the Mets, and they've had a series canceled already or postponed because of COVID, and you're going to have a lot of that this year. But it's very, uh, it's kind of turned upside down from what I thought it was going to be. You know, at the end of the season, as of right now, yeah, and the Mets should have even more wins. But every time Jacob Degrom starts, they they score one that? run. <laughs> that, that guy talking about bad luck. Yeah, I mean he's one of the best pitchers, probably go down with one of the best baseball pitchers ever. And this guy, he's thirty years old now. I think. Yeah, I think he's thirty, thirty-one. And typically, when you get older, you, your velo starts going down. His keeps going up. I like, heard he's it. three miles more a uh, pitch on his fastball right now than he was last year or the year wow. before. 
there was a great line on twitter about when uh he goes to the hall of fame how everybody you know thanks everybody who helped get him there he's gonna say i I'm, i'd like to thank no one <laughs> i did this by myself i thought that was a great line because that, that's very true though right now the run support he or the lack thereof he gets night in night out is uh is just laughable yeah and you also like francisco Lindor is really not playing up to his potential right now pete alonzo as well so uh you know maybe they just got to get into a rhythm and then once they do the offense gets hot then maybe he's still getting hot and then all of a sudden they can start putting up 10 you know eight to ten runs to help them out a little bit reds in first place early in the central at seven and four brewers cardinals six and five cubbies can't hit malcolm uh, especially to start the year uh they are five and six i'm still expecting the cardinals uh to win this division but a nice start by cincinnati yeah absolutely and they are putting up a ton of runs they, they are well. they are putting up a ton of runs and uh you know uh jeff hoffman former ecu player yeah is uh is is on the team he had a really good outing his first outing uh his last one i think he you know kind, kind of got hit around a little bit but you know sonny gray's pitching well i mean uh uh i, I agree with you i think when it's all said and done with the cardinals are going to be the team in that division um but you know milwaukee's playing well too you know i didn't think i'd like watching milwaukee but uh but they got jbj jackie bradley jr on that team and you know he's one of my uh, Red Sox guys, so I've enjoyed watching him. You know, going out there and he's robbed a couple of home runs already early this year. The in NFL, it goes so fast. There's so few games when there's a marquee matchup, you get excited about. It. It's usually on Sunday night football, Monday night football, and and it's a great standalone game. In baseball, they play these teams so many times. It's hard to get fired up for one game or one series. Having said that, Dodgers at Padres this weekend, Malcolm. Is that something you're excited about, or is it? Look, they're going to play 18, 20 times this year. Not a big deal. They'll uh, they'll face off beginning, uh, I think, Friday for a series coming up. Yeah, I, I I'll probably end up uh, watching a little bit of it if I can, depending on how you know late the uh, ECU games go. But um, I, I'm intrigued by that. You know, I don't know if uh, Tatis is back yet because I know that he had an injury and left last week, but. You know, Musgrove throwing the first no-hitter in Padres history last week is pretty cool. Obviously, I'm a Mookie Betts fan. Um, that Dodgers team is ridiculous, Was you know, was ridiculous coming in, and then they get Bauer. But uh, you also have, uh, I believe, Hugh Darvish is on the Padres, is he not? Yes. So, so now Hugh Darvish is going to be throwing against uh, – um, against the Dodgers, his old team, you know, so uh, it should be fun. It should be fun to watch, and and you're right. There's in, unless it's like a really for me a really good matchup pitching wise, I'll flip through the channels and catch a little bit of the game, then I'll go to something else, something else. But you know, if you have a uh, like a Garrett Cole pitching versus um, I don't know, say they're playing the Pirates, then I'm not going to watch a lot of it. But if it's Garrett Cole versus uh, Kershaw, I'm going to be watching it. Uh, I'll go and apologize that uh, the Braves Cubs is the Sunday night baseball game this weekend instead of Dodgers Padres. I'm kind of shocked by that, actually. Uh, Dodgers Padres will be 410 Sunday on MLB Network, but you'll have plenty of chances to see those teams and that rivalry this year. I guess the it's usually Giants uh, Dodgers is the big rivalry in the West, but now the way these teams have uh, both kind of been stacked up, uh, they are going to be neck and neck all year and then that's how the standings look right now with the dodgers at nine and two and the padres at eight and four yeah absolutely and you know everybody always uh you know would always talk about the red sox and uh and the yankees about you know buying their teams and stuff like that well now the west coast is starting to do that yeah you're right so so, uh uh that's exactly what happened with uh the dodgers and the padres malcolm uh we talked about it a moment ago uh right before you got on uh, about the rule changes they're gonna oh, have brutal. some experimental rules in minor league baseball the atlantic league second half of the year is gonna move the mound back a foot what do you, what's your thoughts on that well i read something about it uh you know earlier today when it came out the reason the reasoning behind it from mlb standpoint is uh as of right now or probably last year and combined to right now um, tw- the strikeout rate is for pitchers is like twenty nine point four percent, up from sixteen percent to twenty nine um, across games. And what MLB wants to do is they they are thinking that fans don't want to see the third you know the third out be strikes. They want to see it uh, or strikeouts. They want to see the more offensive 
hmm. as opposed as opposed to being pitching and the defense. ball in play. Ball, and, exactly and, yeah. correct. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So by moving it back, then all of a sudden, you know, if you got a guy who can barely throw it sixty feet six inches, now it's probably going to you know hit right in front of the plate every time. So it'll be interesting. I'm not a I'm not a fan of that at all, and I'm really not a fan of the uh, the double hook rule or whatever that they're talking about, the DH rule or the the other DH rule that they're talking about where. Um, you can have a DH in your lineup as long as your starting pitcher of that game is still in the game. Once your starting pitcher comes out, whoever comes in in that spot to pitch has to go into the DH spot. Hmm. So then you start pinch hitting each time. Yeah, so well, they, what's the point of that? They're, basically, they're trying, they want to they want to get uh, the pitcher to be able to hit more and play more, be be more offensive in the game. Is which what is read. like counterintuitive for yes. what all the rules are being based on right now, which is offense. I find that very strange. Yes, so. it's it's stupid. So there, <laughs> so therefore, you would have like you know if you have a, and they also want the pitchers to go longer into the game as well. So you don't have a, so you don't have a pitcher who just pitches five innings and that's it. You know maybe have, if he can go six seven innings and that means you can see your DH keep hit your DH twice, in, you know, yeah. twice maybe three times before you have to pull them. It adds a little more strategy too. You know who do you put at DH and and you know because you're going to want that your best hitters in the lineup for the entire game. So are you more inclined to if a guy can kind of play third base? Uh, do you put him at third rather than DH so you can keep him as bat in the whole game? So. A, a David Ortiz type yeah, deal. Like, over I mean, he, first base. he wasn't a great first baseman, but he was very serviceable, especially when you got to the World Series. Absolutely. Yeah. Malcolm Gray joining us talking Major League Baseball. Malcolm, once again, ECU taking on Houston this weekend in AAC play. And Malcolm, uh, Wichita State uh, with a nice little weekend last weekend. And, and I had said earlier this year the Pirates likely won't play any other ranked teams the rest of the year. Well, I spoke too soon. Wichita State finding themselves getting closer to the top 25. Yeah, they I think they come in at number 28 in uh, collegiate baseball's poll. Um, you know, they're playing they're playing well. I mean, they have a I mean, a former big league manager as their head coach. So, they know the guy knows a little bit about baseball. He, he coached for about 6 to 8 years in the in the league. Is it so, Wedge? Is he? Is Wedge? Eric, Eric Wedge, Wedge. Yeah. And uh, so, they, and then their uh, their director of ops person is uh, is Lauren Hibbs, former Charlotte head coach. So, uh, I mean, they've got a lot of talent, you know, coaching wise. They know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, they're playing well. I just, I, you got to feel bad for a team that opened up conference play and you play a team eight times in a row. But that's just yeah. the the way the the luck. You know, it went. Everybody decided, or the conference decided this year, whoever your travel partner was, that's who you're going to play the first weekend, and then the rest of the schedule from week two to the end was already predetermined. That's just last the way it worked. Out. It just, it, that's just the luck of the draw. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Charlotte; they're helping out the Pirates by winning as well as they are in uh, the top twenty-five. So I believe. Uh, Old Dominion as well. I yeah, mean, uh, they're playing very well. I saw uh, Malcolm four. Conference USA teams uh, could potentially make a regional this year. How about that? And Louisiana <laughs> Tech, Charlotte, ODU, and FAU or FIU, one of those two. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah. That's uh, – that, that did not expect to hear that. And now the AAC trying to get, I guess, two right now with East Carolina and with Wichita State, although the last time we saw a full season of baseball, wasn't it Cincinnati that snuck in and won the uh, tournament, I believe, and went to a regional? Yeah, they did. They uh, they actually won the conference tournament in 19 yeah. and and uh, ended up going to Oregon State, and they actually beat Oregon State in game one, ended up going uh, – two and two i think on the weekend but uh they won game one to put uh the team that was a national seed uh in the losers bracket early on malcolm uh we're watching Stephen f austin they're beating texas tech right now four to three when you see this field it probably brings back some bad memories right uh yeah well not so much i mean yes and no because the pirates were 90 feet away from uh going to, to the college world series three times and we just happened to you know I think it was Brady Lloyd that was at was at the plate and his bases loaded. He hits one; it literally skips right off the the uh, the pitcher's mound and starts floating a little towards uh, behind second base. And we had Travis Watkins, who is not the speediest of runners. I mean, he's faster than I am, so that that tells you something. Uh, he's got little, some wheels, but uh, he you know easy double play guy candidate, and that's exactly what happened. And and then uh, that game, if I'm not mistaken, that was the game that went like. 13, 14 yeah. or something like that. Joe Engel pitched his tail off, you know, just kept throwing, and then they just, you know, they washed down, and then we got to the Sunday game, and it was pretty much over with. 
uh pirates ready to get back to uh that super regional uh coming up this year and uh looking forward to uh some postseason baseball but malcolm a whole lot of baseball to be played before then and ecu needs to continue to take care of business they have done just that so far this season yeah you're absolutely right i mean just uh keep doing what you're doing right now guys i mean that's what they've been doing and uh and there's a you do that good things will happen and you know right now the first step is just you know win game one on friday and then we'll worry about game two malcolm uh thanks for hanging out with us today man always enjoy it we'll uh we'll try to get you down here once a month and uh do a little mlb uh wrap around and also talk some pirate baseball with you i'd love to do it just give me a shout buddy thank you sir appreciate it malcolm gray joining us inside the pirate radio studios ecu a set to go against the houston cougars this weekend Corey glore set to go to houston but before he does he'll join us inside the pirate radio studios we will talk about what he's seen from the pirates so far this conference season and also uh get a car update ball through the windshield how's Corey handling that is he i think it'd be cool if he drove to houston without a windshield We'll see if that's in the card. So the oh no, <laughs> the oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Shirley Rhodes. The oh no, Chandler. You want to throw one out there real quick? The oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a time out. Come back. Have more for you after this. <laughs> The Pirate Radio Podcast. Professional wrestler action, Mike Jackson. As soon as I walked out of, the, out of that ring and back to the dressing room, the boss came to me and said, look, can you do the next three TV tapings for us? I think they thought 71 years old. I'll just go out there and wallow around and not do anything. But, you know, I'm diving through ropes. I'm walking the top rope. I'm, you know, I, I'm doing Herculean head scissors. And it amazed them. And, and the whole locker room came out and gave me a, a standing ovation. Listen to every Pirate Radio Podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribe in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. The Pirate Radio Podcast is powered by White Claw Hard Seltzer, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. I can't think of anyone who doesn't love a clean car, but how often do you actually go to the car wash? Does it take too long, or maybe it's just not a very nice place? Tommy's Express changes everything. Our wash is bright, inviting, clean, and fast. I love the flat conveyor belt. So easy to pull onto, much smoother ride, and safer for my car. And when you join Tommy Club, you can wash as often as you like for one low monthly price. I save money and time. We're Tommy's Express. Tommy's Express Wash, now open on the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road. In Greenville. UBE and PirateWear.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory ever. Brand new Adidas is arriving daily, along with Under Armour, Columbia, and Russell Athletic. UBE is loaded with cargo, and new items are being added daily to PirateWear.com. Be sure to check out our children's store, The Crow's Nest, for all of your young pirates. UBE and PirateWear.com, an ECU tradition for 50 years. Go Pirates! Wait up, wait up. Papa John's has a new stuffed crust. Oh, we did it. We did it. All our tweets, DMs, and carrier pigeons worked. This ain't just stuffed crust. This is Papa John's crust. Stuff. Hey, Pirate fans. Order the new Epic Stuffed Crust One-Topping Pizza for only $12. The new Epic Stuffed Crust Pizza is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Hey, Pirate fans, it's time to get that yard done right with the new John Deere mower from Quality Equipment. Our premium lawn care lineup is what every homeowner needs this spring. A John Deere will change the way you mow with easy-to-use attachments, effortless steering, and intuitive controls. Right now, save up to $700 on X300, X500, and X700 series mowers. Learn more at qualityequip.com and get quality done right. Offer ends 10 21 Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. If you love the food at Villa Verde, and hey, who doesn't? Now Villa Verde makes it even easier for you to order takeout. Tell us about it, Jay. If you go to myvillaverde.com, you can order online, and we'll have it ready for you to go. Plus, you can pick it up at either one of our locations. No waiting in line to pay, and no waiting at all. Just pick it up and go. With online ordering from myvillaverde.com, or from our mobile app, plus even from our Facebook page. Villa Verde, now with two Greenville locations to serve you. Villa Verde, a platform for good. Hey, Birdland, Orioles 2021 single game tickets are on sale now at Orioles.com slash tickets. 
Tickets are flexible and affordable. Individual tickets start as low as $15. Purchase your single game tickets and choose from popular promo dates, including the Memorial Day beach towel and more. Plus, to make sure your experience is worry-free, we've introduced enhanced game day health and safety protocols. Capacity is limited, so select your dates and purchase tickets now at Orioles.com slash tickets. Save during Bostic Suck Furniture's Spring Styles event. Freshen things up, make a statement, and make it exciting. Save on new looks, new colors, new styles. We have so many beautiful ways to update your home. Explore our 35,000 square foot showroom. From name brands like Bassett, Lazy Boy, Rowe, Kincaid, and Rastonic, get up to 15% off plus six months special financing. Or get special financing for 48 months. Step up your style right now at Bostic Suck Furniture. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Get educated and make prudent decisions about your financial future, contact David Dom at Carolina Wealth Management today at 439-1344 for a free consultation. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right, hour two of Pirate Radio Live. We are baseball heavy for the first half of today's show. We'll be more football heavy on the back end as Bryce Williams will join us at 5 o'clock. And we've got some Mike Houston audio to get to from post-practice on Tuesday. Right now, we'll stick with baseball as Corey Glor, the play-by-play voice for ECU Baseball, joins us inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Corey, welcome back. How you doing, man? Hello. Hello. I'm doing fine, uh, Clip and Shirley and Chandler. I'm doing well. Thank you for hosting me again. So you just go ahead and get that out of the way in case they ask you how you're doing. Now they already know. Yeah, I'm fine. jumping the gun on them. I'm greeting them. <laughs> Corey, uh, boy, we got a uh, had a major mishap at a game this past weekend. We did. I think you're... That wasn't it, I don't think. Was that a major mishap? No, I mishap? think it was. Hit it again. There it is. That is not Stone Cold coming inside the Pirate Radio Studios. That is the sound of Corey's car windshield being crushed by a baseball. Yeah, that happened Friday doubleheader against memphis so so after a long day of work a very long day of work and uh strolling out and i'm i'm pretty well exhausted by that point and then i see in the darkness as rain starts to fall Hmm. something's not quite right with my back glass of my vehicle and then i see a pretty sizable hole in the back of it and the rest of it is just shattered beyond repair you still have the baseball the baseball did not make its way into my vehicle oh man it skipped off it it came in with such an angle and such a velocity that it ricocheted up back over the car and so i don't even get the souvenir off insult to injury uh has the windshield been fixed it has been repaired i was able to sneak it in saturday morning and it got fixed uh while i was at the ballpark on saturday uh otherwise uh it would have been a question as to when i would have been able to uh get it fixed prior to leaving tomorrow and nothing you could have done about that i do make the announcement uh before every game fans please be aware of foul balls that are hit into the stands and out of the stadium i feel like nobody pays attention to that rule because uh, every time a foul ball is hit like rarely do we have a great catch at clark leclerc stadium usually it's the the loud sound of it hitting the aluminum yeah. and it, it really irks me like, a lot of tentative fans when it comes to foul balls at clark leclerc i agree with you on that. go for the catch and and more Lay importantly out for it. more importantly pay attention there, a lot of times people don't even know what's coming they're on their phones they're enjoying their popcorn and cracker jack but not paying attention to the foul ball it, it irks me 
Uh, I, I agree with you. Good. I'm glad you're on my side. One on of one. my favorite things to do in the midst of a long day of calling baseball is call some of the fans racing after foul balls. And yeah. when you are, as an adult, get a foul ball, what is the rule that you're supposed to do? Uh, not give it to a child. Exactly. You're supposed to ruin a child's day, <laughs> hold it in front of them and laugh and say, you should have been quicker, kid. Uh, no, I love that stuff. Yeah. And, and but uh, you know where I where I my parking pass was at Clark LeClaire, I knew I was in prime foul ball territory, and so I usually I will always park with my back facing the stadium for this exact reason. You'd rather have it in the back than right. the front. Also, that's uh, the uh, motto of Corey Glore's life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. It is 4.05. That didn't take... Uh, wow, we are barely into this appearance here. It's already off the rails. Yep. Uh, I always try to park with a tree as well in between the stadium and my car. Give to you a little prevent, buffer? Yeah, to prevent situations like Friday. And that foul ball didn't... I think I even might know which one it was because I remember calling it and thinking, boy, that oh, skimmed no. right past the right side of the press box and out of play towards that soccer field behind us there. And I was like, I th- you know, that's right around where I'm parked. Could and, be trouble. Yeah. And, and it was. And it probably was. I haven't called out this person yet because I obviously I can't confirm that it was off of his bat. Do you think it was a pirate? I think it was a pirate, mm. yes. There, but th- on Friday, there were a lot of fastballs thrown, a lot of late swings and hard-hit foul balls that skimmed out of play, and I think it was one of them in Game 2. Well, that uh, that is all past us now. Yes, we have. Uh, it was a trying time, but... Uh, <laughs> But we got through it. We good. persevered. Very good. Very good. Uh, right now, we... Oh, dear. We are watching Texas Tech and Stephen F. Austin, and that is a bad play by the Lumberjacks. That was a misjudgment on a fly ball to left. And right now, the Red Raiders have cut it to one, five to four in this one. Corey is headed to the state of Texas, correct? Yes. As far as I know, there have not been any... Uh, any changes as of since I walked in here? I was told this morning Houston is still a go. So I have uh, I have not canceled my flights, or I have not canceled my hotel, or I have not stopped prepping for the Cougars. I don't know why this is a thing, the psychology behind it. I'm not the only person this has happened to. You have that dream where you're back at school and you either didn't do your assignment, you can't find your class. Have you had that one? Yeah, in your it's been a while, life? but yeah. Like uh, and I had it recently, and there was a twist on this one. My my daughter was there, so usually it's like you're kind of back at that age in that school. But I was an adult, and I realized I had not done a huge assignment for the next day, so I was getting twelve year old Lily to help me out with it, and I never once realized that I'm in a dream. Having said all that, have you thought about a scenario where you fly to Houston, but the team the flies to there. Omaha, <laughs> and you and you're like thousands of miles away well i made sure this morning to confirm with uh, uh multiple people both here in greenville as well as in houston that this is actually still on and that this is the series that is in front of us this okay because you're so, not traveling with the team right no i mean you could I have mean, a home alone I, situation it turns out i think i might be on the same flight with okay. them out just matching up our itineraries and, and i'm staying at their same hotel but no, I, I was in charge of my own booking for for these trips this year, and so I, I found out about five minutes prior to when I would have needed to cancel my flights oh, wow. today that that we were still good for Houston, and I you know I was ready to scramble and book a flight to Omaha if that was where we were going to go or Orlando or whatever the case might have been. But I'm just imagining like Cliff going Corey, <laughs> just Home Alone style. <laughs> Kevin, put some ranch on it. Put no, some ranch that w- on it. I'm, let me tell you this: that would not be Cliff's reaction if I were not there. He was like, "Oh, I'm missing something's not, you know, something's absent here." Where's oh, Corey? Corey's fine. Corey's not here. Where's well. that guy with the fat face that's not calling our games? Fat, fat. So, uh, okay, Corey will be with the team. I, I, in Houston, I believe hopefully. I will. I, I'm going to Houston tomorrow, and I believe right. the team is heading there as well. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm 100 percent sure at this moment that's where they're going. This is a good thing, and but as we learned from Malcolm Gray, the contingency plans were already kind of in motion, and I think that's uh, that's good if you're a baseball fan. I think it's important to note moving forward that if a series does get canceled or postponed due to no fault of ECU's own. The Pirates will do all they can to try to get some baseball in that weekend. Yeah, this was something that I was 
inquiring about before the season were what is the plan of attack for this team if something like this maybe comes about and it nearly did this week and there was enough lead time it sounded like it sounded like East Carolina found out probably late Monday night that maybe there was something going on with Houston and so they were able to put some feelers out there on Tuesday and so they have you know a a group of coaches that within this general region that they got at the ready there that's how the Elon series got set up a few weeks ago and then they sent out just kind of a blast to a bunch of coaches on Tuesday morning saying hey you know just in case what's available here and and Creighton has an open weekend now because their series with UConn was, was shelved and so I know Creighton did reach out and say hey let us know if we want to work something out here. But luckily, it seems as though everything came up okay with the contact tracing side of the Houston thing. And so everybody would much rather have a conference series played this weekend. And I'm sure the Pirates are actually more than okay with going on the road to do it here as well. So uh, best laid plans are still going to be in place here, and that's a good thing. They, this feels like uncharted territory almost, heading out for a road weekend series. The Pirates you and, and Corey went down to Georgia for Georgia Southern earlier this year. The Elon deal, I mean, it was only two games. It didn't really, at least from the outside, feel like a true road series since it was only a couple of games. But this is uh, this is different. ECU, and this is the first this is the first time they're on a plane, or did they fly? Yep. To Georgia. Nope, they bust to Georgia Southern and they obviously bust to Elon as well. So this will be first flight for frankly a lot of these guys in the first flight since 2019 season as yeah. well. So I th- this is going to be new for a lot of these guys and you know, I, I think this is where we'll see what happens this weekend, but that Georgia Southern weekend was a, a bit of a test for them in weekend two. So I think if they can tap into how they were able to kind of get through that weekend amidst everything surrounding them, that's going to come up big this weekend. Pirates uh, are flawless so far in league play, sitting at 8 no Corey, we talk about it every week, how the, the four-game series sweeps were going to be rare. Well, we've already seen three now across the league. And I still, despite everything I've seen, think they're going to be rare. We might not see any more. Totally with you. Or we could see three more. Who knows? But uh, it has been a fantastic start to the season for ECU. And I keep going back to this too, Corey, and you're calling all the action every pitch, every inning. While ECU is 8-0, it's not like they have blown out every team every game there have been key moments in each and every game that ecu has been able to make the critical pitch or the the get the critical run in and and these games have been tight uh as you know Corey. now they have run ruled uh each team they've played uh but also they've been in some tight ball games including uh the the last one on sunday that ended up uh looking like a blowout but all that happened in the bottom of the eighth inning that series was a great series, yeah. and and you got to see probably the two best games of the bunch there sitting in your position at Clark Eclair. So uh, I think what stands out from the Memphis weekend is that every single one of those games was different and was won in different ways. It was a run rule to start, and then it was holding off a rally in the middle innings for Memphis in game two of that doubleheader. Then it was a slugfest and a somewhat sloppy game in game three, and Memphis eventually tying it late, so they had to come and do it themselves in the ninth inning, and then a pitcher's duel uh, on the final game on Sunday. So, yeah, I, I, it's it's an 8 no start, and it's a deserved 8 no start. They haven't wiped out every game, nor would you anticipate them to, but what stands out is that through eight games now of conference play, If there is a way that a team would like to attack East Carolina, they're equipped to handle it, Uh and they can handle whatever style you want to try and go. If you want low scoring with a lot of base running and and a lot of pitchers throwing strikes, well, Sunday show that they can win that. If you want to try and out-hit them, well... Saturday show that they can out hit you, and then they can also run really if you're you know putting up runs with their ace in the mound. So there are so it's such a complete group that they care they are so well built to handle any style of game that's thrown their way. Corey Gore joining us inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll have more with Corey. Set up the Houston weekend. Talk about the Cougars who are struggling uh, a bit right now. Corey, we'll look around the AAC and talk more baseball with Corey Gore when we return on Pirate Radio Live here on a Wednesday. Back with you after this. In sports, if you think joy only happens after you win, think again. 
Look at the world's most successful athletes like Serena Williams, Brooks Kepka, and Alex Morgan. They don't spend all their days grinding away. They take time to enjoy themselves, like getting together with friends over a Michelob Ultra, because they know that happiness is the key to winning and that joy is the whole game, not just the end game. Michelob Ultra. 95 calories, 2.6 grams of carbs. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. A.B. Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Ready to travel and take a trip? American Airlines has recently added more flights in and out of PGV. Book today and enjoy the friendly convenience of flying from your local airport. American Airlines, now with more flights available at PGV. Book today at AA.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Good things come to those who wait. At Jersey Mike's, they also come to those who don't. Download our app, order ahead, and skip the line. Cut to the Chase by Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. In studio today with Tony Edwards from AG Home Solutions. And Tony, you love to help people remodel spaces or even do new construction. We do, and we also can help people find financing when they want to do projects like this. And so we partner with folks like Joey Barrow with Annie Mac Mortgage. And Joey's in studio with us as well. And uh, Joey, people have a lot of financing questions to be able to help reach the home of their dreams, whether it's remodel or, or new construction. No matter how large or small the project may be, we have options for you. Even if you have credit concerns, we provide guidance to help you get the home of your dream or turn the home that you currently have into the home of your dream. Joey, how can folks get up with you? You can call us today at 917-8400 or you can go to our website at greenville.annie-mac.com and tony what about if people have renovation questions how can they get up with ag home solutions you can contact us at 947-2526 or check out our website at aghomesolutions.com thanks again to tony edwards from ag home solutions and joey barrow from annie mac mortgage joining us today at jimmy john's we don't make sandwiches we make the sandwich of sandwiches We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Save during Bostic Sub Furniture's Spring Styles event. Freshen things up, make a statement, and make it exciting. Save on new looks, new colors, new styles. We have so many beautiful ways to update your home. Explore our 35,000 square foot showroom. From name brands like Bassett, Lazy Boy, Rowe, Kincaid, and Rastana, get up to 15% off plus six months special financing. Or get special financing for 48 months. Step up your style right now at Bostic Sub Furniture. Here with Melissa from ENS Hemp Company. Melissa, tell us how your products and services can help people. Well, for over two and a half years, the team at ENS Hemp Company has been helping educate our community on the many benefits of our products. Our customers have seen great success dealing with everything from stress, anxiety, fatigue, pain, and PTSD, just to name a few. You can come in today and our staff can help you find the best products for your needs. You can visit us at Fire Tower Road near Sam Jones Barbecue or enshempcompany.com. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. 
Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Villa Verde on 10th Street and Villa Verde Dose by the hospital are open for you, serving unique and healthy dishes from the Dominican Republic. Order online at myvillaverde.com or the Villa Verde app. You can order a family meal that feeds six to seven people, and they'll have it ready for curbside pickup today. Whether it's dine-in or takeout, Villa Verde is a platform for good. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Baron. All righty, got some Pirate Baseball coming up this weekend on the road for the first time in a while. I am uh, selfishly excited about that, that I'll get a weekend off. Corey Glore will not have the weekend off. He will be traveling, heading uh, deep in the heart of Texas. It's a beautiful Houston. Thank you, uh, Corey Glore. We want to start that. breaking the song. The stars at night are big and bright. So I know that from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, right? That's the only place I know that from. I just know it. You just know it. Yeah, it's a Show song that trivia. exists. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Corey heading out. Houston. Hello, Houston. One and seven in league play uh, to start this year. Corey, what uh, have you dove down and found out the struggles for those Cougars? What's going on with them right now? Well, uh, if you'd like the simple version to condense on time, they haven't been able to hit. They haven't been able to pitch. <laughs> it's pretty much the extent of that here so far. They have one really consistent bat in their lineup, and he left after game one against Wichita State last weekend with a back injury. That's Tyler Belomovich, and he's kind of the heart and soul of that team remember as well. Remember that name? Yeah, and uh, you might remember him. Uh, the Pirates got him as a pitcher in the conference tournament a few years ago. But uh, they have a, a really good power bat in Steven Rivas. The problem is when he doesn't hit it hard, he doesn't hit it at all. They have a lot of trouble getting base runners on. They have had a couple of injuries uh, that have depleted them in terms of the infield and moving stuff around. They have a great starting Friday night pitcher in Robert Gasser. He's been terrific. He got hit around by Wichita State last weekend, and behind him, it has been a huge question mark. It is very unHouston like right yep. now that we're talking about a pitching staff that is, frankly, this rough right now. That They are thinner in the bullpen. That One of their guys had an arm injury last weekend. They have Carter Henry, who's their main weapon out of the relief corps, but everything outside of that's been hit and miss. So it has been a real inconsistency problem right now for Todd Whitting. You mentioned the, the the solid pitcher Friday nights, and we're going to see a lot of that in league play. It's been pretty remarkable to see back-to-back game fours to close out the series, Corey, pitcher duels, uh, pitcher's duels. And yeah. that is not something I expected heading into this year. I expected those Friday nights to be low-scoring, pretty quick games. Did not expect Sunday's uh, game fours to go that way, but that has been the case so far, at least for the two ECU series. Yeah, and I think that there might be, there are a couple things I think in play there. I think that the Memphis series was Chris Durham, their their left-hander. The the Pirates haven't had a ton of soft tossing left-handers thrown at them this year, and I think it gave them a lot of fits. That's been a bugaboo over the years for ECU. And and Tyler Smith, I think, had his best outing of the year this past weekend against Memphis. I also think game fours, by that point, you have a a lot of guys that are worn down, and so Mm -hmm. that also plays a part into this. Now, that might be thrown out the window this weekend against Houston, but that could be an element here in play as well, where guys are just kind of seeing the finish line through what was a very exhausting weekend, and so you're not going to get as much base running going. You're not going to get as many you know hard contact at-bats as we saw in the previous games of a series, but this past weekend, I think it was a case of two pitchers just really carving. Cliff Godwin continues to talk about you know trying to get Jake Kuchmaner right, and, and he said that it's not for lack of effort. Nobody's going to outwork and, and outprepare like Jake Kuchmaner, but uh, he has not been uh, the old Jake, and it's so hard to find a flaw uh, in this team right now, Corey. I guess we'll just we'll go there and say, what can Jake Kuchmaner do to make the second half of the season more impressive than in the first half? I think the thing that I've kind of noticed right now over the last couple of weeks is I don't know if he's getting as much movement on his fastball as he frankly needs to get with something, a fastball that sits in the mid to occasionally 87 miles per hour, needs to get a little bit of sink on that fastball, which is not quite there from at least my vantage point. Beyond that, if that's still going to be a little bit of a struggle to 
pinpoint his fastball. I'd love to see him use more changeups because it feels as though that that's actually been put a little bit more on the back burner. Certainly in conference play here, I've been a little bit surprised at just how many fastballs have been thrown. That Cincinnati game was pretty apparent that he was really trying to establish that fastball and just couldn't quite do it. And then Memphis is ready for it coming up a week ago. So if if that fastball is not going to get that life back to it, and if those corners are not quite there like they haven't been the last month or so for Cooch Manor, then pitching backwards is something that he's more than capable of doing. A change-up curveball that are really good second pitches for him might have to become primary pitches. How has, you know, there, there's always a, a freshman wall. Carson Wisenhunt did pitch a little bit last year, but it was not a full season. How, how has he done as the year has progressed, Corey? How do you expect Carson Wisenhunt to pitch the, the remainder of 2021? I think this weekend will be a good weekend for him. I think this is a good test coming up for him. This will be his second road start of the year, and he was ace level against Georgia Southern in a game of the Pirates. They didn't need to win, but you felt like they needed to win with how that series had gone. Mm-hmm. He completely shut down that team. I think so far in conference play, his stuff has been decent, and I think there have been a couple moments where he's been a little bit rattled and hasn't been able to get himself out of it yet. This past weekend, it was a lightning delay that did it. Once that came into play, right. and he had such a long layoff there, he wasn't the same guy coming back. He looked good prior to that, but after that, it wasn't just the same thing. So, if he can kind of stay locked in and composed when things maybe start heading downward for him and and hard contact starts coming or maybe location starts eluding him, I think that's the next step here because I think Cincinnati and Memphis have done a good job of, frankly, opening up a a few more wounds on Carson Woods and Hunt once they've started breaking through on him. Corey, your uh, very simple scouting report was Houston uh, struggling to hit and not getting anybody out pitching. So, with that being said, what kind of games are you anticipating this weekend? What kind of series are you anticipating? High scoring, longer games, short you know, you never know, but but yeah, they're just hands in the air. Who knows? We'll see. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, this it's it's funny because prior to the Memphis series, I was walking around the concourse a little bit, and someone stopped me and said, "Well, there should be four wins this weekend, right?" <laughs> and I said, "I don't know. I, I just don't know. It's baseball. Like yeah. anything could absolutely happen. This could be the weekend where Houston completely flips their season yeah. around. It could be the weekend in which East Carolina asserts themselves again as the team to beat in this conference and pushes Houston clear out of view for the rest of of the season. It could be a split. We have no idea, and all four games could look wildly different. I you look at everything that's transpired thus far, and you look at a couple of injuries right now that have now crept in for Houston. The Pirates have the better talent and it perform better, well, that doesn't mean anything coming up this weekend. So I, I don't know. We also don't know how these rotations are going to be matched up either. Houston hasn't announced theirs. ECU hasn't put theirs together yet. Even though we know who the four are going to be, we don't know what order. And so we don't know how that's going to play out, where Robert Gasser is going to be and how the rest filters out for the Houston pitching staff after that. that they, this could be the weekend that they are have circled on their calendar. This could be the weekend where they say, thank God we finally stopped seeing Wichita State <laughs> And we're glad we're seeing a different uniform here. Let's pounce on them. Or this could be the the weekend in which East Carolina goes on the road for the first time and says, come get us rest of the conference. A lot can happen here. And that ballpark's been weird to this team over the years. Yeah, you uh, you just set up a, a nice series, Corey. That, you use that for your intro. Part of my job is to sell here. <laughs> like, that's what that's what the pregame show is for. That was spicy. Uh, knocking on wood, Pirates uh, go into this series pretty healthy, right? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the only injury right now that I'm aware of is Skyler Brooks, uh, who who had a leg injury a few weeks ago, and it's going to be a little while for him from what I've heard, but everyone is good to go. I've even heard that Lane Hoover might be face guardless here this weekend, at least for some of his play, but it was great to see him back out there and and contributing right away as well. So, uh, yeah, this team right now is, is as close to healthy as they've been since the start of the year. A lot of options for Cliff Godwin now with the return of Lane Hoover. Corey, did you notice, I don't know, Russ, did you, I didn't notice him being apprehensive at all. It seemed like he was kind of all in once he was out on the field. How about you? Yeah, I noticed that too. I love the first, very first play of the series was hit to him. But he had to make a play on a fly ball right off the bat. And so if there was any apprehension, if there were any, that's kind of the final step of a rehab process for any big injury like what he suffered was actually getting into a game. So 
for him to actually get into the mix right away, he got a base hit in his first at bat on that Friday opener as well. And then just kind of doing the things we're used to seeing from him. I think eventually exhaustion came in late in that double header for him, which you get. And then he got back into it, had a big base hit on Saturday, and then was in the mix on Sunday as well. That was just kind of the guy that we've seen over the last three years, and I didn't see any sort of hesitation from him. Corey Lohr will be on the call this weekend. Pirates and Cougars, and is it a day-night doubleheader on Friday? Did I see that? Where it was like... It's a 3 o'clock Eastern time start for Game 1 on Friday. And then are they going right after then 45 minutes after. Okay, I thought I'd saw... No, it's not going to be... I think I think UH put a kind of an approximation in okay. terms of when Game 2 might start. If it's a day-night doubleheader, then I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> okay, I, am, I am anticipating because that's conference rule 45 minutes after Game 1. 10 for all right and uh and cory will be there on the call cory let's talk about your favorite professional sporting teams uh how are the brewers uh to start the 2021 season uh they have been uh they've been not bad uh, they were leading comfortably against the cubs as i was coming into your studios today their their starting pitching has been terrific uh, they are wildly injured now in the lineup. Lorenzo Kane, Christian Yelich, Colton Wong are all on the injured list already. So Jackie Bradley Jr. is kind of the main centerpiece of the lineup, and that ain't going to do it. But it might be doing it against the Cubs team here today because, you know, Corbin Burns has been ace level, and Brandon Woodruff has been very, very good, and, and, the, and the starting pitching has been rock solid so far. So they're they're, <clears throat> they're what twelve games in after today, and they'll probably be I think they'll be seven and five if they're able to take care of this one here today. So yeah, they've been Brewers like your Bucks are looking up at the Nets and the Sixers, and uh, sitting at th- thirty three and twenty right now, big favorites over A Rod's Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. I noticed. I uh, think they're getting Giannis back. He's missed about five, six games in a row here with an injury, and they might actually get uh, P.J. Fuller involved as well here today who's been injured. Who is P.J. Fuller? That's not who I'm – I'm not thinking of the right guy there. Yeah, I think I am. Well, I don't know who See, this uh, – they, they, the Bucks have actually lost uh, prior to their last game against Orlando. They lost like five straight because they've had nobody – playing oh pj tucker pj tucker i was like who's pj fuller (laughs) i've never heard that's a basketball player that's a that's a a, a former basketball player so uh you're yeah Yeah, let me know the playoffs start yeah that's where i am with them hey that's a good thing right yeah i it's it's a i feel like a bad fan for saying that because i frankly haven't watched a ton of how many years did you watch bucks basketball and say i hope we make the but then but then it would be yeah in years past i'd watch the regular season because i know that's where the joy would come watching (laughs) oh maybe that maybe they'll beat chicago tonight now it's like all right take care of your business and now prove it to me in you know april unlike what you did last year whenever the playoffs were last year in the bubble Corey, uh thank you for hanging out with us man uh, thank you, you for having some. me. I I've, I was uh, hoping for snacks. Uh, do we have anything in the back? Peanuts? We got some wheat thins. Not Dude, bad. Those are mine. <laughs> <laughs> we got Shirley's wheat thins. <laughs> we have uh, Shirley. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Was yeah, a long crew here. Yeah, the long crews outside. Would you so not share? To start a motorboat. <laughs> <laughs> would you not share your wheat dance with Corey? Uh, for Cor- for Corey, I would. Yeah. For anyone else, no. I'm not touching those. A wheat gloat of wheat thins. <laughs> yes, a gloat um, of wheat thins. Shirley usually has pretzels. Yeah, I usually I keep snacks here because oh, or Reese's oh, cups. Yeah, totally. I promise. But I didn't have Reese's cups. I today. promise. Next time I invite you to the show, I will have snacks for you. You're not going to invite me to the show again, then, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I still have leftover Easter candy. You like Three Musketeers? Yeah, sure. They're pretty good. Yeah, they're kind of underrated, I think. Corey, what do you do on a flight? Are you watching a movie? You listening to podcasts? You sleeping? What are you going to be doing? I catch a couple of Z's early, and since I got two flights tomorrow. And uh, and so I'll, I'll try and wipe out most of the Raleigh to Atlanta flight knocked out. That's, I, and I always grab a window seat because of that. I will always try and get some plane sleep. It's been a while since I've been on a plane, so now i got to remember how to do this. But uh, And then, uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, 
I might do a little bit more prep on the second flight from Atlanta to Houston. I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful I'll get most of it done here today, but uh, just in case I don't, and once I get Houston's rotation and our rotation set, then I'll do a little bit more. Maybe that'll be the second flight. All right. I'll just run up and down the aisle, and I'll just start high-fiving people. <laughs> hey, that sounds like what Chandler would do on a flight. Uh, be careful doing that. I don't know if you should do that on a plane. People might get scared. People are scared of me anyway, Chandler. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at me. It's the voice. Yeah. Yeah. They, they see me, and they're like, oh, that guy's nothing. And they hear me, and they're like, oh, my God. Chandler is a big high-five guy. We're talking about the most famous fives he's given. Who is the uh, most famous person you have shaken hands with or touched? And physically? where am I on that list? <laughs> you well, no I, you, wait what no you're 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 definitely top five but, but who who are the most famous people you have oh that's a question touched. to me i thought yeah, you were yeah. asking chandler no, to no, list no. off no. his his uh we've already answered that uh let's see who are the most famous people i've been lucky enough to shake hands with or, or high five. ryan braun or high five i have not met ryan braun i have uh wow I don't know. Uh, I don't know who comes to mind here. To be honest, I've met Charlie Manuel. Okay. Yes. When and he was at Clark Leclerc. No, he was at the conference tournament oh, when okay. he was his special advisor with the Phillies after he retired. And yeah. We play at the Phillies Spring Training Complex. Um. Let's see. You're not a celebrity seeker. No, I can't say I am. And if if I somehow stumble. Uh, into like into a building with one or a room with one i always just kind of like turtle like I, i'm much more of an introvert than i let on i don't really like bothering people yeah either, that's so. it's like you know if i see someone in a restaurant or something like that like i'm not gonna go walk up i i did i bef- before i became just a whack job of a human i did meet mike ditka <laughs> so that's so maybe that's the name that's up there all right and how about this Corey? how many people have walked up to you and said hey can i get a picture or an autograph uh, I actually, I've not had that. I did have actually last night at softball, uh, uh, someone on the other team, as I was walking out said, could you call one of my at bats? <laughs> and so they That's recognized cool. me. Yeah. Uh, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I was the pitcher. I'm not gonna. Here's the pitch. Swung on and belted. <laughs> I, that happened. And a lot that today. is high. And that is way back. And that is way gone. <laughs> that happened to me a lot yesterday. Oh uh, no! It was a rough night. Can I? Uh, I got a line for you to get in this weekend. Oh wow! Everything I do is organic. <laughs> See if you can get that in. <laughs> Everything I do is organic. Oh, let me write that down. <laughs> All right, thank you, uh, Corey. Thanks for hanging out, man. Hey, way to uh, way to make sure the uh, the grounds crew uh, does what? the middle of your show. What'd you say? Uh, you hate you going to trivia tonight? I think this, that's the plan. Yeah, I'm gonna get your, go back re- home. Get your homework done. I, I got to prep. I yeah. got to pack, and then I'll um, I, I got to make a couple crazy. stops here, get some errands done. But yeah, I'll be trivia up because I hear you're playing too. I am playing. And if you're not gonna play with me, I want to just clock you right in the face. <laughs> Whoa! In the, sp- in, the, in the theme of the game, not physically. Uh, yeah, there's another line for you to get into. Put, yeah, put some ranch on it. Put some ranch, put some on, ranch on it. On it. Yeah. Uh, uh, grab you some peanuts on the way out to. Uh, I'm about to call you Tony. Uh, hey, who Tony. Is, who is Tony? <laughs> you look like a Tony. Tony. I look, hey, get you some You're pain, dark the hair. opposite of a Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I am see-through. <laughs> All right, let's get a break I in. I a ton of Tonys from Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. Let's get a break in. We'll come Tony. back. Those Swedish Tonys. Let's, uh... <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, am I done? Yeah. Oh, it's great being here. We're talking to Jeff Charles when we return. From the baseball voice to the voice voice. We're back with you after this. The area's number one pool builder for over 40 years is Greenville Pool and Supply. From fiberglass to vinyl to custom concrete, they do it all. And if you already have a pool, make sure your water is clean and safe this swim season with the help of the pros at Greenville Pool. If you bring a water sample to them, they'll test it for you in the store for free. And going on now is the annual water care sale with 20% off all water care products in the entire store. The 20% off sale is going on now until Saturday, April 17th. But only at Greenville pool and supply. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirate's Cove Fast Pass. 
The new Pirates Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in Newburn is now open. Pirates Cove in Newburn is offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And have you heard? Pirates Cove on Fire Tower Road is now offering interior cleaning. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. This is Dr. Phil Perdue with Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. My colleagues and I recognize how difficult this time is for everyone in our community. We continue to see patients during the week while taking precautions to keep everyone safe. Our extended care clinic is now open on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. so you can avoid the emergency department for your urgent orthopedic care. For more information, please contact us at 757-2663 or visit our website at ortho. East.com. Spring is a great time to plant flowers, trees, and bushes. When planning your landscape, please keep in mind that you should never plant anything within three feet of a gas, electric, or water meter. The same thing applies if you have an electric transformer in your yard, except keep plants eight feet clear of the front in case crews need access during a storm or an outage. Always remember to call 811 at least three business days before you dig to avoid underground lines. This important safety message is from your neighbors at Greenville Utilities. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners. Whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. What the heck was that? There goes Chuck from Naughty Dog again, so pumped about the awesome things at Naughty Dog, he runs around town screaming with excitement. Naughty Dog releases two to three beers every month, has food trucks every Friday and Saturday, wine specials every Wednesday, plenty of indoor and outdoor space to enjoy, beers to go with curbside pickup, and just launched the new Koozie Club. Be sure to ask about that on your next visit. Naughty Dog Brewing Company on Main Street in downtown Winterville, and be sure to follow Naughty Dog on Facebook and Instagram. How much does the word reliable mean? Sure, all businesses describe themselves as reliable, and we certainly wouldn't expect any business to be unreliable, but when you take a word like reliable and make it your way of life, the entire core of your business, it tends to mean a little more, and it's something you have to show people, not tell them. At Delcor, we show it by being there the same day you call. We show it by simply doing outstanding work with exceptional products, a family-oriented work ethic, and genuine caring for all of our neighbors throughout Eastern NC because in a time of need we know the first and the only thing you need is someone you can count on that's why we only use equipment you can count on too like a train comfort system it's hard to stop a train Delcor can have a new train comfort system installed in no time or we can provide an AC tune up to make sure your system is performing well so will your system keep you cool all summer find out call us we're Delcor the service professionals reliable for over four decades visit DelcorInc.com today Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Town Insurance is your premier independent insurance agency for maximizing opportunities to minimizing risk, Towns Insurance Advisors offer expert professional advice to clients of all sizes. For personal or business insurance questions, call 756-8300 today. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Rock. All righty, here is the skinny. Got Jeff Charles joining us momentarily. Got Bryce Williams at 5 o'clock. Got Mike Houston comments coming up in the 5 o'clock hour. Got the Pirate Radio booty bag opening up in the 5 o'clock hour. So still a lot to go here on a Wednesday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Let's now head out to the Fixed NC Live line and visit with The Voice, his weekly chat here on PRL. Jeff, how you doing today? 
Cliff, I'm doing great. I hope you are. Hey, do you want to start with an Akil Badu update today? Uh, he is uh, he's the man, Jeff. I, you first <laughs> introduced me to the name last week, and uh, since then, yeah, I've been following him, and uh, he's been playing fantastic. He really has. Here are the stats, Cliff. He is 9 of 23 for 391 batting average, four home runs, 10 runs batted in, and two nights ago on Monday night in Houston, he had a 450 foot home run. <laughs> and then last night he followed it up and he had another home run. They've got him playing center field now. He's been playing left field and right field for the Detroit Tigers. They've got him now playing center field. They've dropped him down in the lineup, I think, to take a little pressure off of him. So he's been hitting eighth, but uh, he's just been on fire. And he's really the talk of Detroit Tiger baseball these days. 22 years old. We talked about this last week. Uh, uh, Cliff, he's only 22 years old. He's from Silver Spring, Maryland, but grew up in Conyers, Georgia, and has never played above Class A baseball until this year. He was drafted by the Minnesota Twins, kicked around to the low minors for uh, a couple of years with Minnesota, had some injury issues, and they exposed him in the Rule 5 draft, and then the Tigers picked him up this winter. I don't think they ever expected him to make the uh, Major League roster this year, at least not at the beginning of the year. He, Usually don't promote a guy from Class A to the major leagues, but that's what's happened. He got really hot in spring training, and he hit five home runs, and everybody started you know, wondering who this guy is, and he's really never cooled off. And It's really a fantastic story. Plus, he's really a great kid, and it's good to see him have this kind of success early. Now, the question is, is he going to be able to sustain it? But I'll tell you what, it's been quite a run for him so far. Jeff Charles joining us. You introduced it, and, and you followed the Tigers, Jeff, and also the Cincinnati Reds. Let's talk about a Red who's also a former Pirate. Jeff Hoffman got off to a uh, great start to the season, uh, got hit around a little bit when the Reds went out to Arizona. Where is 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 he a, a staple now in that starting rotation? Are they going to kind of see how he does? Well, what's uh, Jeff Hoffman's status with the Cincinnati Reds? Well, of course, he's going to have to produce, just like everybody. But I tell you what, Jeff's been given a great opportunity. The Reds lost some pitchers, including Trevor Bauer, from last year. So they had some spots available in the starting rotation. And as we all know, Cliff, he's always had the arm. Uh, Jeff, uh, he's got a great arm. It's just a matter of being kind of harnessing things and, and putting it all together and get his control issues uh, under control. So, you know, he's been given this opportunity again. You know, a lot of guys just seem to be given a lot of opportunities. Uh, Mike White is another one, as you know, with the Orioles all those years. Uh, another former Pirate pitcher who was given opportunity after opportunity. And, uh, you know, sooner or later you have to start producing. So Jeff's got this opportunity now again with the Reds. And uh, let, let's hope that he can stay in the starting rotation. As you mentioned, he had a, a really good outing. Uh, so he's very capable. There's no doubt about that. He just hasn't quite been able to put it all together at the major league level. But, you know, sometimes guys need a change of scenery. And, you know, Colorado's an awful tough place to play out there. And so even though Cincinnati is not an easy place to pitch either because it's a small ballpark and the ball really sails out of there, he's still got a great opportunity here with the Reds uh, as a starting pitcher in the big leagues. And let's just hope he can take advantage of it. Jeff Charles joining us today. Jeff uh, had a great Pirate Radio podcast with Pat Watkins. And, uh, Jeff, we had that on the air last night. We got it coming up again. And I was looking at the uh, the draft that Pat Watkins was selected in uh, by the Reds, 32nd overall in 1993. You want to talk about a, a, a talented Major League Baseball draft. The top pick that year was Alex Rodriguez, uh, Billy Wagner, Derek Lee, Chris Carpenter, Torrey Hunter, Jason Veritek. All those guys were drafted ahead of Pat Watkins. That draft also included guys like Scott Rowland and uh, Jermaine Dye, John Rocker, Richie Sexton uh, was in that draft. And I remember as a kid uh, collecting cards back then. I guess I would have been about 11 years old then, Jeff. But the cards you wanted then were Brooks, Kieschnick, and Trot Nixon. Uh, a couple of familiar names there. So that was a. I, I started looking at, at that draft after your, the name came up, and I saw you were doing a podcast with Pat Watkins. But uh, a pretty stacked 1993 MLB draft, Jeff. Yeah, it really was. And so for Pat Watkins to be in the first round, that says an awful lot. Yeah. Message. As we talked about it in the uh, podcast clip. The fact that he came off that year at ECU, which was one of the most incredible years, probably the most incredible year ever for a Pirate baseball player. He had 445 
as a Division One player for the entire season, which is, you know, mind-boggling. I mean, Little League kids don't do that a lot of times. So, you know, like 445, and he had the, the great year. He had the power numbers as well. And then, of course, he had some, some really good years in the minor leagues. He just kept moving right on up. Had a great year at Winston-Salem in, in Class A baseball in the Carolina League. And then he moved on up to Double A and then to Triple A. Had a really solid season at Triple A in Indianapolis. At the time, they were the Reds Triple A affiliate. And then he got the promotion to Cincinnati and and had had some chances there. Uh, the Reds then traded him to Miami. He was there for just a very very short period of time, and then on to uh, the Colorado Rockies. But uh, you know, as far as a college player is concerned, that year he had was just an incredible year, and it was just so much fun to, to watch him play. And Pat is, uh, folks, I hope they had the opportunity to listen to the podcast, and I know it will re-air and also be archived as well, but he is a first-class quality guy, one of the best guys that's ever come through that baseball program. It was so much fun to talk with him and see what he's doing in his life now and how he's matured, and he's a family man, and now he's got, you know, he's got kids playing baseball, so... Just a lot of fun to, to talk with Pat, and he's over in the Raleigh area doing very well and in private business, and just a first-class guy, and uh, we appreciate his time so much, and thank you for everything you did for Pirate Baseball. Connor Norby trying to uh, replicate some of those stats, Jeff, as he is having a phenomenal year at the top of the lineup for ECU. The Pirates getting Lane Hoover back last week. Uh, they're, they're, you know, Gavin Williams has made his presence felt in the starting rotation. They're hitting on all cylinders right now, Jeff. 8-0 to start conference play. We didn't know how many four-game sweeps there would be in the American, and ECU's already knocked out two of them in two weeks. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they're on the roll. You're exactly right, Cliff. I mean, they've been they've been outstanding, and just keep your fingers crossed they can keep it going. Now, sooner or later, they're going to lose a game in the conference, and I know they've got four games scheduled uh, this weekend uh, in Houston. But, you know, the league is a little bit down this year. It's maybe not as strong as it's been in, in previous years, so Pirates have a chance to, to make some hay. And, as, of course, with any team, you have to stay healthy. You have to keep your... Main guy is healthy, and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that that can happen for Cliff Godwin's ball club. And as you mentioned, it's great to get Gavin Williams back out there. We know what a great talent he is, and he's had some injury issues, but he's hitting on all cylinders now. So keep your fingers crossed for him. And the other guys uh, been a little bit nicked up, but they're coming back now, as you mentioned. So, yeah, a lot of fun watching Pirate Baseball these days. Uh, the guys have got it going, and, you know, Cliff for an athletics department that, that really needs some positive news. <laughs> I mean, this has been uh, this has been a breath of fresh air yeah. for Pirate fans and Pirate Nation to have something they can crow about and something they can get excited about after what's been a tough run, as we both know, for football in the last six years and a tough run for basketball as well. So I'm so happy for the Pirate Nation that they have something they can feel really good about. Jeff, been a strange week for ECU basketball. We've seen our best uh, basketball player probably since Blue Edwards transfer and, and go to Virginia to join Tony Bennett's uh, squad. We've also seen the rumors of Joe Dooley potentially heading back to Kansas as an assistant. Well, Joe Dooley has since shot down those rumors. He, uh, according to Brian Bailey, was on the phone yesterday morning contacting recruits saying, I'm the coach at ECU. I will be the coach at East Carolina, and I believe all that uh, right now is in the past, and then Joe Dooley uh, still remaining the head basketball coach at ECU. But that was a 24, 36, 48 hour period, Jeff, where we were kind of wondering what was going on. It appears everything is settled now. But uh, how, how much did you look into uh, to what was going on with Joe Dooley the past few days? Well, I was very interested, as everyone was, and was hoping that Joe would stay. But I understand if there was something out there, he, he was considering. I understand that as well. Uh, clip because it's it's been a tough go here. I mean, let's let's face it. We were all excited when Joe came here, and I, I remain one hundred and ten percent committed to Joe. Uh, but things really haven't worked out like like we thought. And I think I think the thing that's been most disappointing is you know when they brought all of these new guys in uh, a couple of years ago, we thought the talent had been upgraded and that the Pirates were going to be better and. You know, that didn't happen, and a lot of those guys who were brought in a couple years ago, they're, they're no longer in the program. And so we're looking at another major rebuild again. This will be Joe's fourth year, and looking at another major rebuild coming up for Pirate Basketball 
this year. And, you know, it's, it's just frustrating when the program just can't quite get off the ground, and, and it just seems like it's a stark record. We've been talking about this clip for a long, long time, and here we are kind of still in the same boat with Pirate Basketball, and I think I mentioned this to you either last week or the week before. I went back and did some research, and in the last 38 years of conference basketball for ECU, going back to the ECAC South and the CAA, Conference USA, and now the American Athletic Conference, in the last 38 years, East Carolina has had two winning seasons in conference play. Yeah. And it's very difficult to overcome that, and that's what Joe Dooley is, is trying to do, and he's trying to do it in a league that has programs that have won national championships and gone to Final Fours, and it's just a very difficult situation. And it looks like, again, next year the Pirates are going to be in a, quote, rebuilding mode again with a bunch of new players coming into the program. So, you know, it's hard. I I talked to a veteran college basketball coach who's a very close friend yesterday, as a matter of fact, and and he called me, and and we talked on the phone for quite a while, Cliff, and we we just talked about the state of college basketball these days, and he's retired now, but uh, he was a very successful college coach, and he he told me on the phone, he says, I just don't know how college basketball coaches are going to do it anymore Yeah, because I always built a program and, you know, he would bring kids in. He'd bring good kids in, good basketball players. And there were program guys who were going to stay with you four years, and they might come in and as freshmen and sophomores get their feet wet, and then maybe as juniors are going to start. And, you know, there was a real game plan to build a basketball program. Well, as we see today, and I don't care where you are, it includes the Power Five teams as well, the fact that these guys now are just going to become free agents is going to be like a one-year free agent deal and when the name like this and image takes over, I mean that's that's going to be a whole new ball game as well. And you know that day's coming, as we know, that day is almost here, as a matter of fact. So I don't know. Being a college basketball coach these days is is very challenging. No doubt about it. Mike Houston trying to build his program, Jeff, on the football side of things. And, uh, you know, it's that time of year where you can be optimistic about your team and the Pirates out on the practice fields and taking a look at, at who they have on the defensive side of the ball, Jeff. And it's just amazing to think that, you know, Bruce Bivens, Xavier Smith, these guys have played a lot of football. They're going to be back for another year. The linebacker position, they had DJ Ford at the safety position to go with. Uh, they're, they're, they're short but talented cornerbacks on the back end. And I do think the defensive line is a a group that uh, as the days and years go on is going to be a uh, hopefully a strength for this ECU team they've added a lot of size and, and depth to that defensive line so uh, Blake Harrell in his first spring as a, uh, a pirate coach missed spring last year Jeff but I don't know what do you think when you, you, you look at the 2021 ECU defense we saw some improvements last year there's still a lot of improvement to go for that side of the ball but I don't know I, I'm starting to, to be a little bit optimistic about what they can do to Defensively, this upcoming season. Well, I hope so, Cliff. I, I, I hope you're right, and I really like Blake, and I got a chance to know him really well last year, and I, I like his philosophy. It's an attacking style, and I think that's good for ECU. And they force-fed all those kids on the defensive line last year. You know, in a more established program, those kids wouldn't have gotten on the field, but they decided to to get those kids out there, mainly because they had to. They didn't have anybody else, and with the hopes, of course, that that's going to pay dividends down the road, and they're going to mature, and they're going to get bigger and stronger and more experienced, and, you know, at at some point, hopefully, in the near future, the Pirates will have a representative defensive line. They've got the bodies there. I mean, there have been times in the history of this program clip that, you know, there weren't a whole lot of bodies around, and you just had, you had the starters and maybe two or three reserves, and they weren't as good as the starters, and then there was another drop-off, and then you got to a point where there wasn't anybody. Well, that was two years ago, right, Jeff? Where they just used the starting four pretty much all year. <laughs> that's, you're exactly right. And, and now they've got bodies to work with. So I think that's a real positive. And, and you mentioned the kids who've been at the linebacker positions that are experienced and, and they, should be, they should be good this year. I think there are some questions in, in the secondary. And you know, they've had some guys leave back there. So... That's always a, a situation that's, that's challenging, but again, they, they've got some kids that have played, and they've got some players that uh, you know, have have good potential. I think 
Yeah, I I think that uh, they've got a chance to be better, Clip. But you know, the the problem is that you're playing in this conference that has so many great wide open offenses. Yeah, I mean, if you if you like offensive football, I mean, the Americans really your league, and you, you know that you've got Gus Malzahn down at UCF, and of course they've always been really good anyway. They've always had the best speed in the conference, and now you have him down there running that offense. You know what? What that means in Memphis, I've always thought they're just about a half notch the last few years behind UCF as far as speed is concerned and with everything that they're doing offensively. And then with Cincinnati, they play more of the Big Ten physical style, so you're going to have to match them in the trenches and punch it out with them because that's the way they play. So the Pirates, I think, can be better, but I'll tell you what, the challenge is there playing week to week in this conference with all of these really good offenses. Talking sports with Jeff Charles. We'll wrap it up with sports entertainment. Jeff, it was WrestleMania uh, weekend. I watched night one. I missed night two on Sunday. And uh, after reading what happened, I was kind of glad I missed it. Uh, it was. It seemed like it was a, a night for the heels uh, to win on night two of WrestleMania. I, I know you're locked into AEW Dynamites on uh, Wednesday nights. Did you watch any of WrestleMania over the weekend? Cliff, I was out of town. I really didn't watch uh, any WrestleMania, and and you're right. Uh, I've just kind of become an AEW guy, now, okay. and uh, I watch that every Wednesday night. Their Dynamite show, and you know, it's a two hour show, but I find myself watching two hours of it every Wednesday night. Maybe I don't have anything else to do on Wednesday night. But, <laughs> uh, it's uh, you know, I just think they they do a great job, and I think the show is great. I think the athleticism is terrific, and I just, you know, I'm all about free enterprise. I think it's great that that they're taking a shot at uh, Vince McMahon and yeah. WWE, and and it's a it's a refreshing new kind of product that they've been smart because some of the old guys like uh, like me that have been around for a while, we can still relate to Double A Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard and those guys from the past, and they've been able to bring those guys back into the promotion. Do I think? You know, bring along some of the the older fans who remember those guys from the '80s. I think that's been smart on on their pool, uh, part, and then they've been able to blend them with the the new guys and the new athleticism. And you know, as great as the guys were in the '80s, clip and you know, like for instance, the Ric Flair Ricky Steamboat matches were classic. They were just terrific, terrific uh, wrestling matches, uh, and those guys would have been great in any era. But these these guys today, I mean, they're they're doing things today in the ring athletically that that those guys in the '80s and even the '90s never even thought about doing. So, you know, if you are a wrestling fan, you've not watched AEW on TNT on Wednesday nights at eight o'clock. Shameless plug for those guys. And then, of course, the old announcers are there: Jr., Jim Ross, and Tony Schiavone are there. So yeah. that's another flashback to the old days when we all remember wrestling in the Carolinas. So, you know, it's just a lot of fun. I think. Uh, for an older crowd that they've been able to entice to watch, and then uh, for the new breed, the young generation, who can really identify with these new young guys. It gets the voices stamp of approval. Jeff, we always appreciate the conversation. Wednesday's here on Pirate Radio Live. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Cliff. The Voice, Jeff Charles, joining us on Pirate Radio Live here on a Wednesday. We will take a timeout, come back. Hour 3 of PRL. We got Bryce Williams joining us. We got a lot of Mike Houston comments to get to from Tuesday's ECU post practice. And we will make you a winner and open up the Pirate Radio booty bag. It's all ahead. Hour three of Pirate Radio Live. We'll be back with you after this. The Pirate Radio Podcast. Brian Fields, Michael Vaughn, and Jake Allen. I've watched a lot of baseball. That's still one of the most fun teams I've watched play. I think one thing that gets overlooked with that team is how good their defense was. Mm. I mean, they were that's, – that's about – I think we made three airs in the first game of the district, and I don't know if we made another one the entire summer. Yeah, I, th- I think Carson made first two airs the very first game versus uh, Rocky Mount at shortstop. And I, I can honestly say I don't think he made another error through states, regionals, or Little League World Series at shortstop. Listen to every Pirate Radio podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribing in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. The Pirate Radio podcast is powered by White Claw Hard Seltzer, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage. 
Hey, Eastern North Carolina, this is Miles Menjis. And this is Landon Menjis with Menjis Bottling Group. We are proud to announce that Pepsi is once again the official soft drink of the ECU Pirates. That's right, Miles. Our family's purple and gold roots run deep. From founding members of the Pirate Club, alumni, and even a team physician, our support over the last 60 years has never wavered. We are Pirates. We're excited to be back at ECU and are honored to serve our great customers throughout Eastern North Carolina. Not only is this the birthplace of Pepsi-Cola, this is our home. Cheers, Pirate Nation. I like the sound of that. Support local, drink local, stay safe, and drink Pepsi. At U.S. Cellular, we see our customers as more than just customers. They're neighbors. When you switch to U.S. Cellular, you can get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free with no hidden requirements. As a neighbor, you deserve it. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. In studio today with Dr. Shondell Jones from Kinetic Physical Therapy. Uh, Dr. Jones, you guys can help people with any aches or pains. Yep, we sure can. As it's getting warmer, we know more people are outside wanting to be more active. And we know spring sports are in play as well. And so if you've got a knee or ankle injury, whether it's just a strain or a sprain, you know, we've got specialists there to treat the weekend warrior and the athlete. For more information, visit us online at kptonline.com or call us at 364-2806. Hey, Pirate fans, it's time to get that yard done right with the new John Deere mower from Quality Equipment. Our premium lawn care lineup is what every homeowner needs this spring. A John Deere will change the way you mow with easy-to-use attachments, effortless steering, and intuitive controls. Right now, save up to $700 on X300, X500, and X700 series mowers. Learn more at qualityequip.com and get quality done right. Offer ends 10 21 Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. University PC Care has been busier than ever repairing personal PC and Mac computers and iPhones during this pandemic. And we thank you for your support. Now, with everyone streaming and doing work from school and home, you may have discovered that your home Wi-Fi just isn't cutting it. It may be time to upgrade your home network, and University PC Care can help. To make a network assessment appointment and discover upgrade options that fit your home, go to talktowilliam.com or learn more at universitypccare.com. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Keep your vehicle clean with the Pirates Cove Car Wash Fast Pass. The Fast Pass allows you to have unlimited car washes every month at every location. Pirates Cove Car Wash has locations in Greenville, on 10th Street, Fire Tower Road, and Memorial Drive. Pirates Cove Car Wash, the ultimate car wash experience and the official car wash of ECU Athletics. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Rock. Back with you on Pirate Radio Live, Hour 3. Bryce Williams joining us inside the Pirate Radio Studios. 
Bryce uh, was just telling on himself a little bit. <laughs> Where it, it, it's safe to say it now. It's kind of comfortable in here, and uh, AC's on. It's just do you feel like you could catch a little, maybe snooze if you're not careful. A tiger snooze. A tiger snooze, as Bryce would say. <laughs> and uh, you were talking about, you know, sometimes classrooms are a little too comfortable yep. when you were in there back in the day, and, and could take a little quick one or uh, or maybe <laughs> even a film session at uh, at ECU, Bryce. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess I could tell myself now. I hope Coach K is not listening, but goodness gracious, some of them sometimes they're because they dim the light. They set you up. You know, yeah. you're in a comfortable chair. The lights are dimmed. You know, you got you know our coaches. You know, whoever's doing it. You know, talking. The soothing voice of Donnie Kirkpatrick. The soothing voice of Donnie. <laughs> yeah, Coach K. And uh, I think I sat in the front, and I, I guess I just had my head set up perfect to where it wasn't like I was drooping. Yeah. You know, and, you mastered uh, the art of the uh, the secret yes. nap. I mean, it, I mean, sometimes it felt. I mean, maybe I was only asleep for like two minutes, but you know, sometimes when you're super tired, those like two minutes are just like dead asleep, and you wake up. You know, uh, you know. Well, okay, so this <laughs> this is kind of so. Coach K sometimes would always, um, you know, during during film would you know you're watching a film and he'll for some reason like if a big play or whatever it was he'd make a real you know yell like an excitement yell mm. and my goodness he made me jump on my skin a few times because i'd be i'd be snoozing and then he just go whoa and i'm like oh i'm like oh my goodness so uh yeah I did, that actually just came to me because i remember yeah. him doing that and like and, oh my gosh he'd give me a heart attack so i didn't know if he was doing it to me or maybe he knew you were snoozing he might have wake you up. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I got away with a few. Um, at least I hope he's not listening. <laughs> so Bryce, you're able to finally check out some ECU practice, right? Yeah, weekend. Yes, thank goodness. Um, I think Trip told me, um, or I texted Trip. I had found out um, through a friend of mine that it was on Sunday. I said, "Well, heck, you know, let me hit up Trip and uh, or Coach Weaver, um, you know, and see if they got practice." And sure enough, they did. Um, he said, "Yeah, come out and thank goodness, uh, you know, I was able to get out there. They got me a fancy little. I didn't realize how fancy the cards are now. I mean, it's like a lanyard with this laminate. Kind of felt important. I did. I said, well, shoot. And I was on. You know, I didn't see any others on there. So yeah. I said, well, heck. But uh, no, nah, it was uh, it was great to be out there. Um, you know, like I get to I get to got to c- catch up with Coach Houston afterwards. Just chat there. You know, Trip Weaver, Roy Tesh, and Coach K." Um, you know, Coach Harrell. Um, who else did I run into? Yeah, you know, pretty much just bro- you, you know, chatting with everybody. You had been on the practice field with Donnie Kirkpatrick in the past. He was yep. giving you instruction. How how is a Mike Houston ran practice similar or different to the the Ruffin McNeil practice? Um, Chat thing. I don't know if it's because of Sunday. It was maybe because it was a Sunday practice, but. I think they got a flex was out at three forty and they were done at five. I said, "Well, dang! I mean, they just were moving. I, they might have not, not done special teams. They did field goal, um, but maybe that's what was quick. But I mean, it was just fluent. They, I think they have a little longer. Per- they have more periods um, than what we would do. Like there, I guess their segments were a little sh- you know shorter from what I was grasping. They had an air horn, so that was a little <laughs> different. But uh, no, nah, it was everything was organized. You know, people hustling around. Um, you know, it looked good, looked structured. Um, and, of course, I got there during, like, the offensive period. You know, I got to see Skelly one-on-ones, and then they did red zone one-on-ones, and Coach K is like, hey, get out there, you know, ace flip. You know, fade ball said, well, give me a size 14 cleat. And I'll... <laughs> but uh, so that was cool, to, you know, to watch all that. Some good plays. So I, I was there. I was at a good practice. It wasn't nothing against special teams, but I also like watching, yeah. you know, seven on seven team some great play there's some great catches made well, give uh, me some names and numbers who stood uh, out to you on sunday well she so you know tyler sneed um you know he's just he just at the right place at the right time or something but uh they threw a pass over the middle and to, it was to him i uh, know it went off of his hands so it went off of his hands did it go off anyways it went off of his hands to the defender's hands and uh, no, that's what it is. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get everything together. It went off of Sneed's hands, and then there were a linebacker's hands. But he, the linebacker didn't catch it, and Sneed was right behind him to, to catch it again. I was just like, what the heck? So just cr- a crazy play like that. Uh, 82, whoever, I think it was 82, made a really nice catch. Um, there was another really nice catch on the far end, far side of the field. Um, talked to Shemette Shane Calhoun. He, he made a really nice catch during team. 
um, in the red zone. He's been mentioned by uh, by Coach Houston. Anytime Coach Houston mentions a guy by name, your ears kind of perk up, and mm-hmm. he's been mentioned as uh, as a guy that's been performing well out there. Yeah, I like that that catch, and then while I was watching like the pods um, drill, like where they just do half half line running. And uh, Shane steps look good. He looked good to me out there. And I, I mean, I think you know who told me. Oh, one of the coaches you know said that he played a lot last year. Um, but yeah, he he was looking good to me as far as you know just his steps and his techniques and everything. Um, so yeah, he impressed me out there. Eighty two, and uh, I know I don't know this number. He is a converted quarterback who has also been mentioned by Coach Houston, who I'm excited about. Taji Hudson came okay, in as a man. QB. And is making the transition tall. to receiver. Yeah, yeah, yep. And uh, I think he's going to be a playmaker. Yeah, he made it. Oh well, he he made a play. You already seen it. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, no, that fired me up. Um, seeing that and other. I mean, there were like I said, there was a lot of good, uh, good. You know, those were just not some standard catches. I mean, there were some good competitive catches being made. Um, so that was cool. Um, you know, I brought like uh, uh, I won't pronounce it, Rajay. Raji? Yeah, Harris. Or is it Rajay or Raji? We still have the cut, Shirley, of how to pronounce his name. I believe it's Rajay. <laughs> that's going uh, back in the uh, yeah yeah well uh, you know he walked by me and you know he said you know hey roger harris I, he didn't know who i was yeah. but uh, i was hey bud you know so it was cool to see him up close you know he's a big fella um you know he did good so it, like so when you're out there it sounds like you still wanted to run a route or two you're you're young enough do you ever get the urge to like oh god man i wish i was kind of coaching now like, do you ever get that do, coaching bug uh, at all i do enjoy coaching um you know, ever like think about it? You know, whether it's high school or you know, maybe if you know collegiate. You know, more so the uh, I like you know the, the technique, like working, coaching the techniques and stuff, and how to help the person or you know versus reads the tight ends or you know on routes and things like that. Um, you know, then the, but all the, like difficulty plays and like the defenses. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm getting gotcha. a little confused. So more so, I like coaching you know techniques and things like that. All right, the Bud Light ECU report brought to you by Bud Light reminds Pirate fans to always stay in the game, drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates, proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing. Let's. Uh, Bryce has already mentioned Tyler Sneed and watching him go to work at Sunday's practice. So let's hear a little bit about Coach Houston talking about Tyler Sneed. Let's go cut three, Shirley. Mike Houston was asked who he's using right now in kick and punt returns. Well, we got this little guy that wears 22 that's pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think we have one of the best return guys in the league and one of the best return guys in the country, and I think he's special. And uh, we're fortunate to have him.